What's up guys, it's Joe and I'm in Florida and I can prove it, there's palm trees. But why am I excited to be in Florida other than the fact there's beaches and seafood? My friends, Audioscape, I've got like seven or eight pieces of their gear, always love what they do, great, exciting company and I've always wanted to come and meet them, see their shop, so we're gonna do it. Produce Like a Pro Channel, tour starts now. Look who it is, guys. Chris Yetter himself. Joe. Mr. 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 Audio Skate. Mr. Joe Carroll. Yeah. Thank well, you for coming. I'm so excited to be here. So you brought me around to the back of the building. What's well, the significance of that? Uh, well, this is actually where everything comes in and where everything leaves. So this is the beginning and the end of everything we do. So yeah. I think it's a good place to start. I could be included in that, like everything comes in. I, I'm, I'm part of yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So this is where... It'd be good to start. I all think. right, awesome. All right. So raw yeah. materials then you're talking about. Yes, all the raw materials come in and then the finished product leaves out of this place. So nice. we have, you It's know, early this morning. They've yeah. already come out and started stacking some yeah, stuff. Yeah, they're already offered. stacking some boxes, FedEx, DHL, UPS. I'm assuming that by the end of the day, there will be a lot. <laughs> yeah, and as you'll see, everything we, we have here with this building is set up for the flow of work. And Ryan uh, actually set up this layout of this building. We've been here about a year. And right now we're in the warehouse, technically. Warehouse is a huge part of this building. It's about almost 15,000 square feet. It's enormous. Uh, so we have a lot of room to grow. We have a lot more things we can pack for raw materials in here. So we're excited. This is giving us room to grow here. Yeah. So we're really, yeah. Also, I could turn this into a tracking room if you'd want to lease me, if you lease yeah. half of it to me. Because, I mean, look at the ceiling height. Snare there. reverb? Yeah, look at that. What, what is that. That's like 30, 35 feet up there, oh, right? Oh, yeah. I bet, yeah, things could sound huge. And I hear I hear work being done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we're we'll in a true a... manufacturing facility. Yes. This is very much manufacturing. This is really, uh, I guess, to a lot of people, the face of U.S. manufacturing, which I think uh -huh. is really cool, and we're humbled by that, and we're we're excited. This, uh, I know, I recognize these boxes. Yes, you do. I can, I can tell you what those are without you telling me. What are they? Well, I'm going to make a wild guess. This is session desk components. Yes. We I, have... I got one from you. Yes, you do. You did. remember that? Yeah. I have, I've, I've had a session desk for six months now, maybe. I'm trying to remember about uh, maybe eight. I, I flip and love it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You guys sold it. Uh, give me the speech about the, the, how all the rat gear in there could be nudged up and down a little bit and it wasn't you know had to be fixed to like hey this is a one u space this is a two u space and so I, I could leave vents between my gear with the tubes mm -hmm. i love it the design aesthetic everything they do is on point and it's it's really cool uh how you can add or take away like modular components especially mm -hmm. to the desk you have yeah, so yeah i think that's uh something that we don't really probably trumpet and talk enough about oh they're it's, awesome it's, yeah now where are they manufactured so they actually, they're based in Germany, they're manufactured in Portugal, and they come okay. in here. Uh, we're the only place that sells them in the U.S., and they come in here on pallets, and we just store them, as you see right now. It was, um, I can't, I love my desk, and it, you know, it assembled really easy. The directions were great, yeah. yeah, yeah, really a big fan. Yep. The van. Yeah, this is the van. We got this actually for, you know... They used to have NAM in Nashville. Yes. Remember? Yeah, I do. So remember. the main reason I got this van was for the summer NAM in Nashville because we'd bring up everything. Yeah. And the, you know, they've kind of so you'd pack gear, your gear. Yeah. And stuff all the in gear it. and that would come yeah. come in the van. So we got this for traveling to Nashville, mainly from where you're at. Actually, that's funny. So tell me, how far are we from the beach right now? Like, if I was to this afternoon decide, you know, hey, Chris, it's been great. But I'm going to need a couple hours of alone time out on the in the in the surf. You're probably about ten minutes. Ten from minutes. The beach. So, okay. So if I find out where the keys are to this thing, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've hit them pretty well. You've hit them pretty well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good to know. Yep. So this, a lot of our raw materials, case parts, things like that, are stored on these shelves. Mm -hmm. We're actually uh, just got a couple more rows of these shelves in, and we're going to still, we're, we've been here about a year, we're going to still be adding more shelving here. Mm -hmm. So, right. well, you got you got room to grow. Yeah. This we is... even have employee of the month parking right there. Oh, the... that's, a, that's, a, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yep. Zach is our employee of the month. Zach. They throw a big, picture of him up there. A big shout out to Zach. Yeah. Look at here. Look at this. Look at here we go, guys. Yeah. 
employee of the month. Now, what does Zach primarily do for you guys? Zach does finishing and final QC as well. So he pulls double duty for all our stereo compressors, pretty much. The uh, AS78, the 260VU. So it's a very, very critical, crucial so part of our I team. So when I see him. Remind me so I can give him a big, you know, shout out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Employee of the month. Employee of the month. Yeah, that's incredible. So what do we have here? Uh, we just uh, have power cables. Yep. Yeah. Power, yeah, yeah. Power cables, necessary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd say. Yeah. We have uh, some water. You uh, know, you know I figure I, people I sh- need water. I will say this is probably a bad time to say it, but uh, water is a big part of the reason you're in this building. Is that correct? Oh yes. Actually, I don't just to make sure a lot yeah. of people, fo- a lot of people that watch this probably follow you guys. So they know about that um, terrible time in your history. Well, uh, that terrible time. I think what's really cool, uh, what, what happened with the, something terrible like that is we were able to take that big negative and turn it into a big positive because we went from big positive. Yeah, we went from a place that we were outgrowing anyways. And we had a catastrophic flood. Our last building, we were starting to outgrow. It was just, it was getting to that point anyways. And then I think just Mother Nature just told us it was time to go because- <laughs> it's Hurricane, right? Yeah, Hurricane Ian. And it didn't actually, what's interesting about Hurricane Ian is it didn't directly hit us. But what happened was we had just, it just stayed on top of us for days. It was such a big storm. So we're, the shop, old shop was at a low point and the water just kept filling and filling. Oh boy. So it got to the point where we had not released a 260VU yet. I had a whole shelf of them. After our house was flooded and we evacuated, I went in the shop building to turn off the, the breakers and every, all the water was up to the desks. Mm. And that shelf was half, that of the ones we had built for the first drop was just half covered in water. Oh. At that point, it was, you know, it was pretty, it was a sad time. It was like, the, it looked like the saddest garage sale ever. <laughs> it, honestly, everything was outside and we were trying yeah. like, what can we salvage? What is even this? And yeah. So after that, I was like, enough is enough. We need to just do this thing. Mm -hmm. We need to get a proper facility. And, you know, it also helps, you know, that we're we're growing the manufacturing plant, even just things that aren't so, you know, fun to talk about being zoned properly for what your business, all of that was an important decision to come here and do this and place our stamp down. So we went from 2,000 square foot to about 20,000 square feet here. Oh, wow. So you, 10 times the space. That's yes. incredible. Well, and congratulations on the finding this building. I, I, yeah, we're planning on being here the, throughout the next decade, and that'll give us plenty of room to grow. Yeah. So right now, it looks like uh, Kyle and Matt are doing some metal work here. They okay. do some, uh, sometimes not everything is perfect that, you know, we have. So we sure. have to modify things or we have to, you know, throw uh, RTV things, you know, and things like that, like transformer cases, all sorts nice. of other stuff. Looks nice. like they're uh, refabricating some back panels right now. Yeah. So they come oh. in just a little... Uh... Some paint. So, yeah. You know, what's interesting about this is this, you know, back in the 50s, 60s, mm-hmm. you would see two-prong power cables. Mm-hmm. And now you see three-prong. Right. That third prong is for ground. That's uh, actually very important what they're doing right there for user safety. Uh, because if, you know... Something happens and the device goes wrong, you know, back with those two prong cables, it could send that voltage or that charge to the case mm-hmm. and this grounds it to the case so that doesn't happen. You don't shock yourself if, God forbid, something happens to the unit. So, so it's extremely. Important. You're kind of. So he's kind of like a doctor. He's saving yeah. lives every day. I, I like. Congratulations. I like to say. Yeah. It's, and yeah. It's, it's, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to pleasure know you. Saving lives, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. We want you to use the gear and we want it to be safe at all times. Right, right. So right now, this is, this is, I feel like we're walking into a walk-in cooler, but yeah, it's it not does. a walk-in cooler. I this is not, uh, yeah, we're not going into the freezer. Grocery store job in high school. Yeah. And I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this is actually assembly. All right. This is where everything is, starts being made. So, and what's interesting with the layout of this is each station, each area kind of has like its own product that's working on it, obviously, each row of desks. Mm-hmm. So right now, these four or five desks, mainly Opto is being worked on here. Sometimes you'll see like an ASA 6A over there over mm-hmm. at Sean's desk. He's doing a lot of the finishing on that, making sure the knobs are on that. And sometimes the simplest things you would think 
mm-hmm. are extremely difficult. Like putting knobs on something like that, ASA 6A is extremely difficult yeah, yeah. because it's a two-part chassis and like getting everything to line up just right. So that's very cool. So yeah. this is the beginnings of your opto compressor then? Yes. And you can see uh, Marley's right now, she's putting on the input transformer onto the board having that pre-mounted. So all these parts get kind of prepped before they even go into the case. Mm-hmm. And these boards, everything's hand stuffed end to end on site here, so. Nice. Which, which transformer do you have in the-, in the uh, uh, That's the... actually a custom made uh, transformer we had. Uh, we destroyed an original UTC, oh, an nice. A-series. Yeah. Uh, and yes, and that's what we have made exactly. It's got everything one-to-one, same material, everything with the original. So. I, ha- I have your Opto and I, I gotta say it's fantastic. Because I have an original Teletronics from, I'm not sure what year mine was from. I need to have that looked up. But um, your Opto is extremely well done, oh, sir. No, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything, it's, it's important. Like, uh, I think we were discussing before earlier, just the recipe, everything, having the right components in the right places. It's all about the whole. It's not about that one transformer we just talked about, right? It's about everything, the, the combination of everything all together. So yeah. carbon composition resistors, finding the right caps, finding the right new old stock tubes in the right positions, not just using new old stock tubes, but it's also tube rolling them, making sure that thing, when you crank the snot out of it, it's not going to fall apart mm-hmm. and it's not going to be underwhelming. It's going to be fun to use. I think that's really the number one thing we're looking for here, especially when we start talking and finishing final QC, it's how things get used. You know, do you want to use this? Is this inspire you? Like mm-hmm. from a creative standpoint, because I think that's a great tool to do. They inspire. I think it's awesome that you guys source old stock, new old stock tubes. That has to be a, a, like a never ending job. It, right? it is never ending. It's a daily job. <laughs> I would think so. Weekends, yeah. after hours. Sometimes Vacation. I'll wake up, can't sleep three in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh UTC. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. Exactly. So he just, just uh, kind of polishing out where the things that protrude. So through what that. he's doing is actually re- extremely important. So like if you ever, if you ever touch like a metal component on a front panel and it's kind of got like a sound mm-hmm. and it changes, that means that th- it's not making good contact with that metal. So making sure everything is milled out properly. A lot of times these, these front panels he's, he's working on there, they're powder coated, right? So uh-huh. that powder gets in the center. So it obstructs anything that's metal for making mechanical uh, connection with the chassis. And that's extremely important to make sure it's low noise as well. Okay, it's already striking me. I mean, I'm at the third station. Hand, hand, hand done by human beings. There's no... <laughs> so back in... Like making sure it's exactly, you know, I mean, he's sitting there blowing on it and feeling it with his finger. And, and this started in uh, 2016 in a single car townhouse garage is where this company started. And yeah. Joey was actually the first one to come work with us. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. Nice. Yeah, and he's, yeah, he's been cranking... On so he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's been he's been kicking it for yeah, he's done every stage of production, you know, so finishing and that as well on these optos. And he used to actually when he started, we didn't even have the opto. That's how old, like how long Joey's been doing this. We had just the bus comp. The first product we started with was the bus comp. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I then, think I remember that. And then we did the opto. Then we did the MEQ before mm-hmm. we did the EQP. So it was just it's it's very much like you'll see from this, I think, uh, it's not about like, oh, we can't do this because we can't find this, or it's just, it's very much a passion project is uh, what Audioscape is. Yeah. It has to be. That's awesome. Well, I mean, you're working with passionate, you're providing goods to a very artsy, passionate community. That's who we are. You yeah. Know? So it's good that you want to get your gear from people that's just like you. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we found. That's what, you know. That's so what works. And that's the uh, that's the, the ASA six A. I think this is one of the most gorgeous units that it we is. Make. It this yeah. this knob right here. Whoop. Oh yeah, that. yeah, that's incredible. Sorry for getting uh, oh, no, my hand really close to your face there. <laughs> like, Who is this guy with the loud shirt? I'm wearing I'm wearing my extra loud shirt since I'm near the beach. Yeah. 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 Well, that's beautiful inside too, man. You get a shot of that. Look at that big old tube right there. So we got bus comp. Mm-hmm. John's working on the bus right now. Yeah. And looks like uh, Andrew's actually working on some step pots for this 6A, it looks like. Oh, the output and attenuators. Guys, how, how you doing? Joe yeah. Carroll. Nice this to meet Joe you. Joe Carroll. Yeah. And this is uh, Matt. This Matt. Is, how you doing, Matt? Matt, Matt builds all our 500 series units, tests them, hand wires our DIs. Yeah, that's that's uh, pretty much a real rock star here. I have 
two of your uh, three A's. So that means he, this guy built them. He yeah, built them. The, um, the, the I'm trying to think of the model number. The, the five hundred. Oh, the V three A. V three A. That's right. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I first started on when I got hired. Here. Well, thank you for making mine really extra special. I know you put a little extra love in it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you and got some pieces over here. Yeah. So one thing that was really cool is I mentioned Matt Hen wires our DIs. And he's working on one, our standard DI right now, our DI Plus we just released. Yes, sir. But we also had a custom run, and Matt designed the case for this, and it's called the classic gold MJR edition. Yeah, the MJR gold edition. That's very cool. And it uses, actually, we did a, a small, finite run because it uses vintage UTC uh, transformers from the oh, 1960s. Wow. Yep. And one thing that's really interesting, I think, too, about our DIs that uh, we don't really talk about, or people don't talk about that often, is we have the impedance switch, mm -hmm. so you can change between, you know, two, 250, 500, and that's really a different sound. And then we also have this load control where you can sweep the windings. It's almost like a passive tone texture control of sorts, mm. and it's um, kind of creates some sort of in betweens. And you're sweeping those windings there, and it's really interesting. I think it's uh, really neat. Otherwise, the standard, the standard wouldn't have that, correct? No, well, actually, this this was the first to introduce that, and then the DI Plus does have that oh, option okay, okay. as well. Oh, I but see it, that knob will be yeah, right. And that right. uses that uses the repro of our of our UTC A11, and this one that Matt designed uses the the original. Very cool. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And we have these made in St. Louis as well. Uh, we have our transformer guru hand winds those. So home of the um, best baseball team on the planet, St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> That's my team. So, um, so, so, what, what are the street prices like on your on your um, website? Oh, uh, for those, boxes? yeah, yeah, those. I think we've been sometimes we've had them even on sale for one ninety nine, oh, which okay. is a steal in my opinion yeah, for yeah. what you get because well, uh, he's just sitting there hand wiring everything. Yeah. With the, being a uh, guitar player, I you know I think we have a strange relationship with DIs. A lot of times, you know, you're, it's all about the tube amp. You know, mm -hmm, for a lot mm -hmm. of guitar players, and this is the first time. I heard a DI, I was like, okay, this is actually, if I was gonna use a DI, it'd be this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's why, you know, we, we made the classic DI. It's just like, uh, so many times you see DIs and they just got these, you know, little whatever transformers. They're an afterthought. Yeah, yeah they're not, yeah, 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 they're just like a, they're, they're a tool that you're not thinking about tone. Right, right. And this right. this has tons of tone. And that one right there, is that available regularly? Uh, or is we that actually a did a custom drop with Providence Sound and Vision with these. Okay. So, yeah, the, uh, Pull it up so you can so see. So that it. would or would not be available on the website. Generally. I think they sold out on the okay. first twenty in like a minute. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I see why. That's there's an outcry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We I, might well, bring I it may back. Be out crying right now. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, are you not taking the hit, <laughs> Joe, Joe? I'm out crying too. Oh, man, thank you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Sometimes I'm like, just be slow. I want to buy this thing, yeah. and it's stuff we make. Yeah. So right now, this is uh, we're at an early construction stage of the ASA 6A, it looks like. You can get out of the way so he can well, get I'm in. Sure yep. This big old monstrosity of a chair. Out yep. Matt, yeah, Matt's actually the floor manager out here, and he actually uh, does a lot of the final QC for D comps, ASA 6A, V comp pluses. Um, Rob, right next to him, does a lot of the finishing for that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's... Oh, it's it's a multi-part process building this these ASA six A's. You saw the sort of the end of it with Sean right, there working right. on the knobs, and it's I I consider it like a two product product well, basically because the the chassis the shell that's a yeah. whole different product. I consider than just, it a, a piece of art. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, truly, that is a that is a look at it. I mean, golly, it's, it's beautiful. And what. You know, one thing that I think is funny about this as well is like you see like just random tubes strewn across here. Yeah. You buy a tube that's old or, or you buy a new tube that's new. A lot of times it's a crapshoot. Mm -hmm. Like you're like picking through like one out of 10 tubes to find that special tube. You know, and I, I sometimes chuckle to myself when someone's like, this tube is just put this one and you're good to go. Which one? Yeah, yeah. Because it's like you're finding, you're cherry picking that one out of that 10. So we have a lot of a lot of waste with yeah. tubes or just you know repurposing them moving them to an area that's maybe not so critical for noise sometimes you could do that like in the opto we were talking about it uses two 12 ax7s the first position super critical it's probably the most critical position tube we've found as far as for game uh for hum microphonics but then the third position is in the side chain it doesn't doesn't you don't hear the, it yeah, yeah you don't hear it so you might be able to you know get away with the black plate rca tube 
in that position, and honestly, it sounds gorgeous in that position too. And uh, whereas in the first position, it's just completely unusable. You're like, uh, if you ever like read about vintage uh, LA two A's being noisy, uh, it's because uh, they probably have like a RCA black plate tube in the first position that's gone bad. Uh, okay. Yeah, or it's going bad. I get it. Good to know. Yeah. And what are we doing here? So it looks like Rob or Gator, as we occasionally <laughs> call him. Nice to meet you, Gator. Is, uh, nice to see you. Gator's working on some uh, front panels here for the V-Cop. Yeah. Right. Which is our stay level work alike as yep. well. The V-Cop yep. Plus in particular. Yep. And, cool. yeah. All right. <laughs> He's hey, going to put you to work. Like, yeah. Let, can I take this home? <laughs> Hanging on my, you know, above yeah. my door or yep. something. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. So, you know, Gator. Those knobs feel great, too. That is not a cheap knob. No. And done. Nice. Yeah. Davies. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's impressive. Yeah. I will say a lot of recreations um, of gear sometimes doesn't have that. Um, and that, that feels really solid. Yeah. Well done, Gator. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. I love your, uh, I love the Macho Man um, figurines. Macho yeah. Man, yeah. A lot of wrestling fans here. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. What do we have next? Well, this next row of desks is EQP MEQ land. So this okay. is all equalizers, uh, our two BQs that we make. Those two models in particular. So it's actually, yeah, these four desks, this is where it originates, where a lot of the finishing, graphing, making sure everything is just right for that. Looks like Nick is working on some MEQs right now. So question for you. I mean, maybe it changes, uh, you know, from week to week, month to month. But you were mention mentioning the the... First product you ever had, second product you ever had, third product you ever have ever you know made. And since then, there's been numerous others. However, I am still seeing optos, and I'm still seeing the you know the passive EQs. In I mean, so they're still hot. Always, those are those are uh, our top most popular products for sure. So like, people still want them. It, they really do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, I feel like. It's one of those things where I think it's great that there's like emulations of this. People are learning, they're coming up and they're realizing as, at a certain point, or even if they, you know, get a really super budget unit at a certain point, they're going to want to level up and they're going to want something for their art to, for it to be the best it can be. And yeah. I think that's where uh, we come in a lot of times where they're like, they see that, oh, okay, this is using the original parts. It's being built here. And, you know, it's just a no brainer. Okay. You know? For me, that, it is. I, but, yeah, but I that's awesome stuff. though, because, <laughs> you, you yeah. know, as many as you have made of these, you've, you've, by now you've had to have made a lot. Yes. Um, and they're, they're still flying off the shelves. You know, what's interesting is you mentioned we've made a lot, but it's still very much small batch orientated. Uh, yeah. And that's what's great about this. It's like, even though we're growing, we're still doing things the same way. You see EQP PCB land, you know, right <laughs> on the back of this. Yeah. See, that is like, we stuff our own PCBs. Yeah. Everything is built end to end here on site. And I think that's something different that we do, and I think that really shines through in the final product as well. I have a stereo pair of these on for my stereo bus. Yeah. Yep. And, and night and day, isn't it? It's like taking it's awesome. the blanket off the speakers. It's incredible. Yep. So yeah. So well done, guys. Thank you yeah. for the love you put into my stereo pair of your EQs. <laughs> yeah. And then next up here we have stereo it's compressor land. So we've gone through EQs. A lot of this is uh, looks like. Zach is working on the front panel for an AS78, which is one of the newer products we have right there. Wait a minute, Zach? Do yeah. I recognize that name? I think you might. Congratulations, sir. Employee of the month. Oh, yeah. That's you great. got your own parking space out there? Yeah, it's awesome. Very nice. Well, uh, all of Produce Like a Pro will be very aware of your workmanship now. Oh, yeah, right. we made sure and get a, we got a tight shot of your face yeah, out there by so your car. Nervous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Very good. Yeah. So this was, are both stations 1178? Uh, 260 VU, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, Glenn okay. mainly works on the 260 VU, but these four stations do a lot of the stereo compressors that we, we offer. So, and they uh, kind of, they can flex from time to time, but yeah, mainly Glenn's been working on the, on the 260 VUs. And uh, it looks like Shane and Christian over there are doing uh, some assembly on back panels and PCB. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, and you can see they hang up the back panels and the, uh, yeah, and the, uh, yeah, and a lot of times these these products, you know, when we go to remake something, it's it's very difficult as far as 
sourcing s simple things you don't think about, like getting a you know push button that's got the peak average right here. Mm -hmm. Like we had to have that custom made. So, you know, we had to have even just yeah the meters custom made. Just all sorts of like little things you don't think about, like have to be molded or made mm -hmm. to bring something back to life because they don't make that stuff anymore. So sometimes we have to go that route. A lot of times when it comes to parts, you know, we're able to find a lot of surplus parts here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. It's one of the biggest things I think about making things in the U.S. is we can find these old parts and we can use them. So like in particular, the 260 VU, mm -hmm. like how do we remake the VCA in that? We used the parts that were in the VCA. We just went and found them, and then right. we just bought them out. <laughs> you nice, know? nice. Yeah. So you that's got, what we you have a stockpile. Yes, we have right. a stockpile. How often do, do, is there a scene change in here? For is this always EQP land? For yeah. example, yeah. Okay, I think so it's, there's it's enough demand for that. It just stays. Oh yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Sometimes we do like certain areas need more help than others. If there's like more demand, I guess. Mm -hmm. So we do like, for instance, sometimes Max would shift over. Uh, to 76 land, who makes our reverbs right there. And, um, oh, the, oh, he makes the reverb? Yep. Max, oh. this, the reverb is solely made at this station. Max has been building them for a few years. Very and cool. one thing that's really, really cool, and maybe we can get some footage of this later on or at some point is. Hey, how you doing? Is we actually build the spring assemblies from scratch. So they start like sleds like this. So these four sleds have three springs each, mm -hmm. and each spring is cut and tuned to a different millisecond. And it creates this whole, like, sort of room or echo chamber. Like a, the diffusion, all the different... Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's awesome. like the left and right are actually not, uh, like, a st true stereo, in, uh, like, true stereo as far as, like, uh, you know, mirror images of each mm -hmm. other. It's like standing in two different observation points in the same room. They're two different rooms altogether. And it's a really cool, unique reverb. It's what drew me to it, the design yeah, of it. Yeah, and you guys have modeled this digitally and you have a, you have it available in a plug-in yes yeah awesome. awesome i think it warrants having a digital emulation of it because i think more people need to experience what this particular design is it's really unique and cool and well, also how many of these could you realistically turn out to meet demand not not, that. <laughs> right that's what i'm thinking it's i mean a if lot you're of work. the springs and tuning them and i mean that's got i think be. we're probably we may be the only company this century doing this you like revitalizing this technology and the original designer actually schooled me for years oh, on this incredible. it took years so he he didn't want this technology to go away, and I'm grateful. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I'm grateful that he's also very patient with me, too. <laughs> maybe some people would have taken a few weeks, took me a few years. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you can see these are raw springs. A lot of times, one spring will just be strung out across a, a, a pan, uh -huh. and it's just floppy, and that creates that boing effect. Yeah. And uh, right now, these springs are pretensioned, so they're not so boingy. Some of them get super tight, actually. You can see this one, how taut mm -hmm. this is. Mm hmm. And all of this is obviously it's a mathematical formula, creating a room. Uh -huh. And that's really what uh, Wayne imparted on me as far as the reason for the formula. He made me do the math on this, which I'm not the best at math. So, um, <laughs> so you did not appreciate that homework. I did not appreciate that homework, <laughs> but I appreciate the fact that I understand it now right, on exactly. that level. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm grateful to him for, for teaching me that. And uh, you could see... It was for your own good, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, there, you know, there's transducers and pickups. These wrapping the pickup side with fish paper and mu metal. And this is to help reduce pickup. This still is extremely sensitive device. Like, we recommend maybe not putting it... Like, I, I, used, I made the mistake of putting it, like, underneath an Eventide H3000. And the power transformer is that, like, literally, like, located right above yeah. where the pickups are on uh -huh. this. And so I, I noticed the hum from that being picked up. So even with this expensive mu metal we're wrapping around the pickups, still there is some uh, some placement considerations we'd have. And that that that's something that's not talked about often with the analog gear, right? Mm -hmm. Getting it set up and getting it all to play together nice is sometimes a pain in the butt. But it's totally worth it in the end once you find that perfect the perfect place for it to live, perfect spot. So it's three springs per tray. Four trays. And four trays, so 12, four 12 springs. 12 springs total, creating right. that mathematical equation of that, of that echo chamber slash room. These are all tuned, like I say tuned to the millisecond, right. basically. So they're, they're all different lengths, and that's a different millisecond. 
Ah. So those different milliseconds are. Oh yeah, you can, you can even see how the stretch. Yeah. You can see the stretch. There, it's a mathematical equation creating that uh, perfectly. Uh, they call it equally tempered uh, spring reverb. That's very cool. It's an, yeah, it's a. And and the guy that we're watching do this right here is one of your right hand man, if I'm not mistaken. This is Ryan. He, he's uh, yeah, he's he actually designed. Not only does he he sort of designed this method for assembly, but he designed the case design for. A lot of the products that we have that ever since 2021, any product we've released since then, he's done all the mechanical designs. Oh, nice. In nice. addition to uh, direct everything here on site as well. So. All right, so let's see the finished, the, uh, finished product here. You got one in the rack, right? Yeah, it's actually near the bottom of this rack right here. There it is right there. Yep. So yep. after it's all put together, that's, yep. that's what it's going to look like. Lights. Nice. Yes. And it, it's what's interesting is, yeah, we worked throughout the design and added some, you know, the this is actually quite different than the original Mic Mix XL305. It's one of those instances where we didn't try to do everything one-to-one. -one. I've mm -hmm. worked with the original designer. We wanted to add what he considered some improvements, which really had to do with the way each side of this assembly was driven. Mm -hmm. It's more open. So you can hear a lot more of that that lovely assembly. You can hear it in in the final product on the 305R. I know on your on your plug-in, you went you modeled the old one and the new one. Yeah. So they have two different flavors. And I found I found playing with it that I choose certain. One time I'll choose the vintage. One time I'll choose the new one. Depending on the source. Yeah. They both. They. I mean, you know, it they're just, both really. Yeah. Useful. They, they're, they're they're different. Yeah. They're noticeably different in a cool way. Yeah, that was part of the idea on the plugin. It was almost like an educational side of it that, like, that ours is different by design. It's a reimagined version of that that we mm -hmm. worked on with the original designer. Now on the hardware units, there's some noticeable differences as well. Like on the EQ section, I you know I made the decision to add center to tenant controls on the EQ for what is true zero, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like, because sometimes if you don't have that on EQ or true zero is like right in the middle of the knob, it just, it feels weird to me. It's like, am I really on zero? <laughs> right. You know, like. Yeah, the OCD so, part of our artistic thing takes over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got to know. When we started out, I used to, I started, I was like, oh, we've got a bigger place. I could finally hire some people to build this stuff. And I started like going the Craigslist route, trying to get people in and it was just, Seemed to have a high turnover rate. It wasn't really working that well. And what we found really worked is getting people that had that common thread of the love of music. Finding people that, they, like, this is, like, they live for music. This is mm -hmm. what they're, they're born for. You know, like, that kind of energy. So mm -hmm. what, hap what started happening is we got, you know, somebody in that, like, told their friend, you know, hey, this is a cool place. Audience gave. This is, like, a dream job. You know, get to build cool stuff. And then it just sort of snowballed, where it's just word of mouth. Kind of like how the products grew with word of mouth, with like you know, somebody saw it in somebody else's studio. Kind of happened like that with the workforce here. It's like, and a lot of times um, we noticed we started getting a lot of people that just either graduated from audio school or graduated a few years back from audio school. So there's a big program here at Daytona State University called, uh, it's an audio program that they started. They have a whole building for it. It's really cool. And a lot of people that work here went to that. Oh, uh, cool. Graduated from that audio program. Yeah, and you, so, full sale would only be, what, about an hour and a half from here or something yeah, like that? Yeah. Not about 45 minutes, actually. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they're you in ever, Altamont. You yeah. have any full, uh, full sale students? Yeah, we've that, had full sale students. Makes we, sense. Yeah, we've been to full sale, done uh, you know some interviews over there as well oh, with cool. some of the instructors. Yeah, a lot of people, just really cool that uh, things sort of happen naturally. Like, mm -hmm. it just sort of fell in place. If you do things the right way and you're willing to do the hard work, I feel like that just that's what happens. Just things fall in place. So. Very cool. We at 76 land. All the 76 revs are done on these four stations right here. So the, the, the F, the A, and the black, all right here? All right okay. here. Do they start down here and to move, you know, in a certain order? Or is it one station is black, one station is F, one station well, is Well, you can blue. see over there, Jeremy's working on a 76F, and Garrett's working, I believe, on a F as well. He's got an so, F, yeah. yeah. So they do so they do them all. kind of on the ends. And you can see Darla right there is actually, she's working on board construction right now, stuffing all the boards by hand that we use for the 76A. Now, okay, so your 76A, that's something... I remember researching a little bit. Yours is different yes. than some of the others out there by being a little more true to the original in some ways. Yeah, the components that are used in our 76A and D and F, like, is uh, they are vintage accurate as far as 
having the, the right type of composition resistor, for instance, the 76 and the A and the D both use carbon composition resistors. And that's a huge part of the sound to me. Some people may argue that it doesn't make that big of an effect on the sound, but if that's what they were using, why not use it? So the it? original head. Yeah. Then that's... If that's yeah, what... Yeah. yeah. So it's just... To, to me, it's just a no-brainer. You don't have to overthink it or over-engineer it. A lot right. of times we see that where... Um, especially I noticed that... Because I come more from a guitar background, mm -hmm. building guitar amps, things like that, where like tube rectifiers are important to the sound. So we never take like a tube rectifier out of a design. We, mm -hmm. don't, we don't cut corners in those aspects because it is super important. That's part of the sound. So yeah, maybe there might be a finite number of tube rectifiers we could find for the ASA 6A, but we're going to keep that in there because that's, that's important. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, if it was good enough for the original, that's what I yeah. want it. You know, I would want it in my recreation too. Yeah, and, and I have one of your Fs. Uh, I have I have an F, and I have a blue stripe. Uh, and so, it, what's interesting about the F is they actually moved to carbon film during that era. So we use carbon film. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's like yeah. half watt carbon films. So it's important that the recipe, every every single part of it, like I was saying earlier, is so important. It yeah. really is. I'm looking over your shoulder here. Your hand doing this stuff. Yes. There's no robot doing this. No. <laughs> yeah, these are our You're robots, real, right? She's a real yeah. person, right? Yes, she's real. <laughs> if I, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think uh, AI is going to be doing this anytime. No, soon. no, no, no. Now, what's your name? What's your name? I'm Darla. Darla, how long have you been with AudioScape? Almost a year. Almost a year. a year. Nice. Yeah. Is this kind of your primary thing? Yes. Nice. I'm, a, I'm stuff in the boards. And stuff she's in the board. Really she's good at it, also so. um, making the I like that confidence. She's like, I'm, I, really I nailed this. She is. <laughs> and uh, she's also starting to assemble the uh, map preamps that, that we announced. Oh, that, yeah. I saw that at yeah. NAM. Yeah, yeah, that's on yeah, something that's on the way. Well. Okay, yeah. very cool. Well, nice to meet you. Yeah, I'll I'll leave you alone so you can get back to and work. Yeah, those are called the the damn twenty sevens. Yeah. Da <laughs> I remember I remember filming a little thing. Yeah, about yeah yeah yeah. The damn maps. Yeah. Them. Yep. The damn maps. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's gonna be coming soon as well. I have I've never taken the lid off of my Rev F, so I'm just yeah. Sneaking I, a peek I, I like I think the board design is really concise on that. I'm yeah. really happy with mm -hmm. how those are and. I think a lot of times it, the the design of something is extremely important as far as how it's star grounded, how everything, mm -hmm. uh, you know, before it leaves R and D and becomes a product, we really uh, scrutinize noise floors on units, things like that. That because it's not like it's 1960 in the sense of this is all there is analog. Right, There's right. digital tools that have hand of God where yeah. everything is noiseless. Yeah. So in a sense, I don't say we're competing with that, but we want to make it so it's an enjoyable experience for whoever's using it. So sure. making sure things are as low noise as possible is probably what takes the longest time in finishing in Final QC. I get, I get that. It makes all the sense in the world. So he's got the, he's got the lid off one too. What, what are we doing over here? So we're zipping up the 76 F, trying to get a, a lot of, finishing. A lot of wire assemblies going into yeah. that. Like I said, we don't subscribe to one transformer manufacturer. So right, we right. Use, I actually uh, like that. Uh, we were actually the first manufacturer to use this uh, CMO12 Cinemag input transformer. It's my favorite transformer for uh, an, an 1176 style recreation because it's there's just something about it. When I first started doing the R&D, it was the 76A was the first rev we did. Yeah. I grabbed as many vintage UTC ounces that I could, and different eras. And then I put them on switches, and I was comparing, and the CM012 um, actually, was, hands down, it had like the best attributes of all of them. And like, it was bar none, like I would actually pick that transformer over a vintage UTC. Really? Because they're so inconsistent, especially those little ounces. They are so inconsistent. This one is just, it's just money all the time. I love it. And, no. and the output transformers actually, we went through a couple different output transformers for the Rev F. And we uh, have a custom OEM manufacturer in Chicago that actually makes those for us. Oh, very cool. Yeah, we had to have that custom made to get that just right. Uh, but I actually love how you're um, not using just any one component, one company, whatever, just all kinds of different things. Even new old stock sometimes, you know. Yeah, funny. yeah. You can't, and yeah. you can't subscribe to any any certain thing. It's all curated, handpicked for that one unit. Very and cool. That's, yeah, that's extremely important. I think that's. It's got to it's got to be on point if it's going to leave here. I'm satisfied it's different from uh 
product to product. What do we have here? A whole bunch of things getting ready to be. Yeah, so they do some zeroing here. They have their, yeah, various stages. Uh, right now, this is just assembly. So there's little tags that we have uh, that you know, says who built it. It'll say the finishing tag. It'll say the data is completed on. We log all this data. So instead of maybe like a social media company that logs data that you know is yeah. to use to advertise to you, we log this data. So like if you buy a 76 today and then two years from now you buy one, we'll know what your other one was and we can kind of match it to that. Oh, I get it. Because I think matching things for unlinked is really cool. And that's another interesting thing that we do is we match. We try to get things matched for dual mono as well as stereo. And I think that's um, sort of some of the white glove approach we have to mm -hmm. the way we, we sell things. It's very, very much we want it to be because there is variances sure. in all this stuff. And we, we embrace those variances. Yeah. We, you have to because that's what the original was. So that's true. Like. If you want to know like what an old you know two A or three A sounds like, get ten of them. <laughs> yeah, right. Get That's ten true. of them. Yes. And go across the, the that, range that, of them. That is one of the things we know about vintage gear. Is when you recreate it, you have to recreate the vibe. You, I mean, if you copy any one. It's going to be different than this one, which is different than the you know. I mean, I, I I'm sure that's a battle you face every time you're trying to recreate. Okay, so the 1178 just came out not too long ago. I, 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 I'm assuming that's kind of a battle, right? In the beginning stages, it what is. exact? Yeah. You know, sound. So one thing we did with the dev process, I think you keep starting with basics is important. So we added some options, right, to the to the AS78. The 1178 hadn't been redone, and there was, like I said, some challenges with that as far as mechanically and finding these things. But what what we did, and what we strive to do, is just one to one. So like the first board rev, everything we did with that was literally just, does this sound exactly like our original model we have here? And Manny actually sent us his original model. Mm -hmm. And I had kept it for like a three months, something like that. And it, how we tested it is like how you never use it, right? We like 20 to one, crank the snot yeah, out of it. Right. How does this thing fall apart? Yeah. Now, how does ours fall apart? Record the tracks, listen back, one to one. Everything exactly the same. It falls apart exactly the same. Then we went, after that, we've achieved that. Then we went and started adding, you know, some mods that maybe make it useful, but not too many. Because mm -hmm. I think if you add too many, things become watered down. Mm -hmm. So you, you find, you, you sort of curate and find the right ones to add for that particular unit. And it can, it can differ. Like, for instance, I think uh, a blank control on something like an, uh, an 1178 is awesome. Not so much on an LA2A, right? Or on a, a, that design, that mm -hmm. vintage design. Because it's, it's kind of transparent for the most part. So like adding a blend there doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Or adding digital recall to that design does not make sense. Cause like, let's face it, if, you know, maybe you should just stop if you, if you need to recall. <laughs> like just find something different to do with your life. If I you guess, need to recall two knobs. I, you know? I, I started to ask you all ago and I got sidetracked by this, uh, all this, all these 1176s. I don't think I've ever seen that many in one spot. So <laughs> just kind of, uh, gear, uh, lust for me. But I was getting ready to ask you, um, and it's probably different for every component or every piece, but how long it takes from the time that you sit down to start, there's just no answer, is there? There is no viable answer for that because it could come, it can make it all the way to final QC or even the shipping room. And sometimes something's not right and it's got to come back or, you know, and, but we do have sort of general time frames. And there's multi parts to it as well. Like, you know, we make the, the optical cells mm -hmm. for the, for the optos. Yeah, that's right. You guys make your own opto cell. Yeah. Yeah. And wow. the, and yeah, the reason for that is I was repairing them, you know, back in the, you know, like 2014, 2015 range a lot, the, the original ones. And the way that people said to construct them now was not like the ones I was repairing. And like the, as far as the construction goes. So I was like, when we were setting out to do the opto, I was like, there's, yeah, there's some manufacturers of T4Bs, but they're not made like they used to be made. So we're going to make them. So I, that was just a process in itself. That's, you know? that's awesome though. Yeah. I mean, other, I, most others would not do that. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll just leave it at that. Okay. So what about product development from the time that you decide you wanted to make the 1178 or the, the RCA compressor? Uh, oh. That, the RCA one was like two, three years. Oh my gosh. The yeah. QC and sourcing parts and uh, just, just even the mechanical side of it. That, that's, that whole chassis design the is, development. Not, yeah, yeah. Yeah, is nothing like 
the design of like any modern rack gear. So like we had to completely do that from the ground up. I think we actually, for that, um, we were already happy with the circuit, I think by that point, but just getting that, we had to like rent an original in LA and do all the drawings from that. And then we had a couple revisions of just the metal work, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and yeah. figuring out, Oh, we need to add a second latch, <laughs> you know, just yeah, dumb yeah. stuff that you don't think about, you know? Wow. So, I mean, what's something that in, in your product line that you was like that, but you know what, that, that came together pretty easy and we got it to market from the time of concept to the time of market. What was, what was your easy one? But I, don't, I mean, like in a, in a timeline. Okay, like so a year, six months. We had built like the core architecture for the seventy sixes. So mm-hmm. doing something like the seventy six D, another revision of that. The case is pretty much the same. Ah, uh, right, right, right. So that's easy. The seventy eight did come together fairly quick. You know, that was not that bad. Um, that might have been six months, eight months. So that was one of the quicker ones we got going. Uh, conversely, there's some like the the Fair Comp six seventy we have coming. That's been since 2019. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so that, and then the MK609 has taken a few years as well. Mm-hmm. I remember when you announced that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's, so, uh, I'm, I'm anxious for you to get that out there. What are we doing here? Ray's zero adjusting a 76A. It looks How you like, doing, Ray? Doing nice to meet you. Joe Carroll. Pleasure to meet you. Ray is the product lead for 76 land. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so. Love it. Nice and clean. Yeah. Nice. He's making sure everything's clean before it goes into final well, QC. I, I have one of these and uh, freaking love it. So well done, sir. You Thank did a you. funny video with that, I remember. You uh, took yeah. like the light bulb. <laughs> the heat, the, the magic finger. Yes, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. I love your shirt too, by the way. Strike you might see the uh, 6A or hear the 6A on that, on the music, because Michael uh, Michael Stein, who does the music nice. for that, yeah, just bought, like, he's got an opto. He's he's had an opto a few years, and he's, uh, yeah, just got picked up a 6A as Very well. Very cool. He has a Stranger Things shirt on, so I guess we should we should clarify that. There you go. He's in the Hellfire Club. Yeah. So here I am. I'm just calibrating up an opto and, you know, going through our finishing process and everything like that. So... How many years have you been with AudioScape? Two and a half. Three. Two and a half, three. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we I've started. Been on for about a year and a half now. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh, wait a minute. I thought I was having lust a while ago. Now I really. Woo. Oh, Look yeah. at them. They're just lined up everywhere. <laughs> You're not, I've only got one of these. You're not going to miss another. Yeah. I know you're not. Kyle's doing his part to make sure the stock, <laughs> the shelf is stocked. Well, he's doing, doing a doing fine job. job. Yeah. I'd love to show uh, how we test the tubes for these that come in because we I would love to see it. Sometimes we can just get tubes. They're, they're fully tested, all that. We still have to make extra sure. So we test them actually on this uh, TV7 tube tester as well. Um, oh, look at yeah. that. That you're, looks like, wow. Yeah, you got some BA. That some is RC. history. Yes. This actually was in the flood. And didn't even, didn't even care. This thing is just like, <laughs> it mocks next, water. Yeah, yeah. Next flood, whatever. Yeah. Everything is so military great on this. It's just, it was made to be like submerged or whatever. So it it kind of gave Hurricane Ian the middle finger, didn't it? It like, really you got did. No, you got nothing for me. Yeah. Bro. It's definitely, uh, <laughs> that's awesome. How this, much does this thing this weigh? This thing's my hero. Yeah. Hey, Let's that is that significant. Way. That yeah. is, yeah. And, you know, it's funny because it's still industry standard as far as I'm concerned for testing tubes. So it's, you know, it's a finely calibrated unit and it does an excellent job making sure that we know, like, for instance, you know, even though there's minimums, we know, like, if a tube's in a certain range, that it's going to last a long time for, for someone that has it. And, you know, that's, that's important, you know, because tubes are, they are a fickle thing, you know, I, you, you, especially put them in the hands of a shipping carrier. And you, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many days a around. month do you have to sit down and com- commit time to doing that kind of thing? Well, because of how we receive, like you mentioned, this is really the small batch aspect of it, right? Yeah. We have, you know, tubes coming in daily. Yeah. Pretty much every day there's tubes coming in. So we kind of keep up with the flow. So this is per- pretty much a daily driver workhorse for us. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. Have you ever had to repair it or anything? Uh, no, I think we just had to line adjust it. Like I said, it went through the flood and just turned right on. <laughs> I we love even it. looked at it, looked at it inside. It's like, this thing doesn't care. Yeah. 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 It, was, it was built for war. Yeah. It was <laughs> built for war. <laughs> right. So, oh, man. We do have a little lab set, session we set up, oh, and nice. I know you'll probably be spending some time on this. Uh, but maybe tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow you can come, you can run a session here. Um, 
maybe do a little mix, use some of the, the stuff you already, some of the stuff you have, some of the stuff you don't have. So yeah, yeah, and, I, I'm seeing things I do not have. For and sure. one, one thing that I do, I think I told you this on the phone when you call this, this is very much manufacturing. This is not meant to be shiny show for mm-hmm. the, you know, this is like, it's gritty. It's, it's cool. But this station in particular was set up for anyone that works here to really understand what they're building, how it relates. Oh, that's cool. Like, like I think it's important for anyone at any stage of our production crew or anything to know the difference between a decomp and an AS78 on a drum track. Like just to, just to have that base core knowledge of it just anything, just even knowing just how rad this stuff is, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. just on that basic level. I like that a lot. That's, that's cool. something that's important to, to all of us here and myself personally. Oh, hey, I remember seeing this. At, okay, so you t- most of everything that's out here that I see is already shipping. Uh, this guy. That guy has been a, a difficult product for a while to get going. We've been showing it at a couple trade shows, and people keep yeah, asking, tried when's it. it coming? Yeah. When's it coming? Well, we finally have it coming. So <laughs> There you go. Yes. Nice. Congratulations. Yes, because yes, I've been waiting on that, too. I've been kind of <laughs> I've got. I have two of your 500 series. Yeah, and those are in awesome. In the mix room, but, you know, for tracking, uh, I don't. So I uh, may have to be a future customer. And we did a stereo D3A that was like one one U. I remember that. Did that ever? Sh- we actually- we shipped a little bit of them, and they're cool. And but there was a lot of a lot of people, a lot of uh, like our supporters. Uh, they really wanted the original form factor. I get it. The original power supply. They wanted all of that, and that's mm-hmm. what the DA3A has. It's like a stereo pair of of uh, of three A's. And if you don't like, if you go buy a vintage pair of three A's, you put them together, they're going to be different. Yeah. You know, they're not going to be for dual mono. That's what's great about the DA three A. It will be for dual mono or link. And that's very cool. Yeah. So it's, that's why it's one concise unit. Plus I, I'm, I'm, you know, personally, I'm not a huge proponent of the half rack architecture. Mm -hmm. So I really like the fact that there's a stereo unit just there and. So much of what we do today is stereo. Well, exactly it what really we did with the, with the DB, uh, DBX 160. Yeah. You know, cause I've got a vintage one and it was a half rack space. And so I've got that wasted space over here. So I like, cause that most people, most studios, most commercial rooms got t- two of them and, you know, bolted them together somehow. And that's what, that's how they always racked them up in a pair. Mm-hmm. Like almost never did you see a single one. So yeah. I'd make, to me, it makes all the sense to do it, to yeah. do that, you know? Absolutely. And that looks just like it. That's gorgeous. Yeah. These, uh, yeah, such a, you know, labor of love. You know, like I said, you could see the, the 6A, ASA 6A. Look at the paint job. Well, that's yeah. like a car, like automotive. That battle, gray. Yeah. That old umber gray is actually the finish beautiful. on that. It's, yeah. It's such a beautiful finish. And yeah, even we, Hoyt has been making meters for over a hundred years. That's who made the meter for this. Gorgeous meter. A lot of, a lot of work with that. These, um, as you took some, um, video of the, of the tubes inside, these old black metal tubes are, sometimes they're from the mid forties. We're pulling oh, wow. them out brand new in the box from like the, the U.S. Navy. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, I'll get, I'll show you some of those as well yeah. here in a bit. But yeah, they're. Do you have like a tube room? We do have a tube room. Oh, yeah, baby. I'm yes. excited. We got a little display in it. It's very, uh, you know, it's very, a lot of what we do here, I almost think it's like brute force. It's just like, we got to get it going. We got to crank yeah. it, but we're, you know, very. Oh, I don't want to so, see a showroom of two. Yeah. I want to see yeah. a, a, not, a real like storage room. Yeah. 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 I love the knobs. about the showroom. These, this is great. This is great. I, you know, I have, I have this. That, that is one of your products that probably needs, um, uh, more people to, to understand that it's, Freaking awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is, that is the drum slayer. Oh, it, it is, is a so drum good. slayer. There's nothing like that. It really isn't. And yeah, you can see the reverb that Max builds uh-huh. down there. Yeah. You can see the 76A, 76D. There's also the, the very new V Comp Plus yep. down here. And yeah, I mean, we have a good wide range of all our products that are full rack here. We don't have the 500 series set up just yet. So once maybe we'll see if Mac and let some yeah, of those go. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. I've noticed from station to station that uh, Bob Clearmountain would approve of this facility because you have Apogee 
converters everywhere. We do. <laughs> <laughs> he, we he love, would be happy. They, you know, it's funny. They, they've been so awesome. Uh, they've, you know, sent us some of their hype mics, uh, you know, and, I just, I've always been a, a fan of those converters. You know, we've been, those are some of the original ones like I've had for years and we just continue to just get them in. I, I have a, a, a symphony still from, gosh, I don't know when. Yeah. So th this is another one. I guess I s saw one over there, but the mid channel, because I have two of your stereos. Yeah. That, that's something that I think probably really doesn't get enough in our community. Not, I'm not talking about you. For in, those in that producer, love it. It's the a producer engineer community. Yeah. I think it's a, good secret weapon that a lot of people don't know about. I think that's an excellent way to put it. You, you literally took the words out of my mouth. This, this, the, the MEQ is one of my, uh, I think just any sort of mid range material you want to process. It's, you know, I've seen, sometimes I've seen, uh, some manufacturers and I think it's cool. You know, when you can modify something from the original, don't add like, just like the mid band to this. Mm -hmm. And they think they have this or they think it's a substitute for this. Right. And it, to me, this is so cool in its own right. It just deserves to be its own thing, obviously, and it was. So having like some differences between this and this, because I think you sort of look at these and you're just like, ah, you sort of shrug your shoulders if you don't know like on a molecular level what's going on. But this, for instance, has a sound, even when you don't have it engaged, mm -hmm. though it's still running through the tubes and transformers, and it's a push-pull line amp right, is what's inside of this. That's what's as the makeup gain stage. So these equalizers, a good way to look at them is this whole front panel, which has the passive circuit, no power runs through it. So it's going to need makeup gain. So the line amp for this is push-pull. And it's a, you know, and a lot of what we sell have push-pull line amps. The line amp on this is actually single-ended. And it's uh, completely, a completely different sound. So if you're just running through the tubes and transformers on this, completely different sound to itself. Before you even get into the, you know, the front panel circuitry and the differences with those. Mm -hmm. So it's really a, a, an excellent sort of Swiss army tool for anything in that mid range. Gosh, I want it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have two of these and I don't have that. I want, no, I yeah. say, oh man, you, you need gonna... two of each. You really do. Oh gosh, I'm going to end up spending money. I know I am. I'll put it back the way I left it so n these guys don't yeah, the, um, get mad at me. We don't really make that many, uh, like this is the V1290. And you know you can various oh, yeah. stages of production with that's these. That's like the UK style vin in the vintage yeah. Neve, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, one thing that I think that's cool that we do is we, you know, even here in the U.S., there's a lot of those old transistors that were used. Like to me, the sound of that old UK British preamp sound is those transistors, the, the old Fairchild BC 184Cs. They've been obsolete for a while, but there's still a huge catch of them you can find here in the U.S. So I buy them. I buy them yeah. in the thousands, you know, nice. and we, we're anything that's like this, like our MK609 or V1290 uses those old transistors. And that's an important part of the sound. In addition to the iron, of course. Yeah. Incredible. You know? So, okay. So that'll be in your 609 as well. Oh yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. No, oh, we're, we're not back messing out, around. Back out where we began. Yeah, we are a little bit. We're, we're actually heading towards final QC. Oh, okay. Cool. This is the room where everything. Uh, there's more of those pre, those, uh, those DIs, right? More. There. What I call brute force here, I guess, is we make sure everything, this room is set up just to make sure everything is perfect before it goes into shipping. Okay. We have to, we have a checklist. We have to make sure that, you know, this isn't loose. Grid caps aren't loose mm -hmm. on, on an, on an ASA 6A. We have to make sure all the noise is up to spec. So yeah, all these stations are outfitted with Apogee symphonies and, you know, we go through, looks like Ian's, you know, testing out some V3As. Get some pairs. Yeah, he has to match pairs on those. So, oh, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. A lot of times uh, people don't realize that these things vary. So it's important that we, we know that, like, for instance, we, we make certain numbers that say at this level, it's got this much compression and this is the release time on the photo cells, things like that. Like we have to log all that important data. And we're actually using uh, the case that would be for the D3A. Uh -huh. uh, that's uh, from Brad from Ladder Than Liftoff. That's his design with this hypermatter. PC, uh, PSU chassis there. So we use those to test actually all our 500 series units. They're just so, they're so easy. And like, as opposed to using an extender mm -hmm. and a standard 500 series mm -hmm. jig, it just, it's so much more fun to just pop them on and go. 
Nice. Like that. Looks like uh, Ray and Zach are uh, in the QC part. Of Wait a minute. Ray and Zach, I recognize them from earlier. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you kind of. They bounce yeah. around. Product, bounce around throughout yeah, the, the day. Product cool. leads, uh, when they have a like a product, they're usually in between a few rooms. Yeah. Uh, assemblies, those they, they stay pretty static. Yeah. yeah. Product leads do float from room to room, doing nice. whatever task at different times. Product leads. Plus, plus. He's, yeah. He's employee of the month. Right well, now. yeah. He's, yeah. got, he's got the parking well, he's spot. The first, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So he's he's the face of the company for the month. In our, <laughs> right. He is for, in our newsletter as well. But so, just keep putting your, give us, provide us a, a, your favorite still shot. And throughout the, the video, when it goes live, we'll just, boom, employee of the month. You know, like every 10 minutes or something. <laughs> right now we have to, you know, separate. Lots of times we're having to roll tubes. So like these are a lot of the old tubes we use in the 6A that have the grid grid cap covers. Sometimes, yeah, they're, they're not so pretty. Sometimes, you know, old RCAs. That's awesome, though. Yeah. Yep. That's incredible. Yep. So these are from the 40s and 50s. Wow. Yeah, some of them still need to even be cleaned up a little bit. They've just been sitting, you know, collecting dust for, geez, uh, 80 years, 70 years. <laughs> so amazing. It, it's though, amazing that they, yeah, that they are still here yeah. and we're able to use them. I'm, I'm just, you know, eternally yeah. grateful to History. be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> That's, so, uh, freaking awesome! Oh, he's got one of those. See, you're taunting me with these yes. these mid range EQs. <laughs> he, you know that I spend way too much money on gear, and yeah. uh, that I can't say no. It, it pairs well with the EQP. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun. So when everything's done here, we do actually come out back to the warehouse, okay. and there's a little shelf for shipping. This All is right. my little whatever shelf of fun stuff. Nice. Whenever I have time for fun, which is never. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we got some reverbs here on the ship shelf. We have some DIs. Uh, I think these are just waiting for uh, the information or where they're oh, going. Okay. So for people that follow you on Instagram, if you don't, you should. Um, when you're getting ready to go live with a batch and there's a picture of some racks with the units on it. Is this it? This is one of them. The okay. one the finishing in there and the old shop, we used to do that okay. even more. But yeah. yeah I remember those pictures that go live on, is it, what days of the week is it? Wednesdays and Saturdays. Wednesdays and Saturdays. Yeah. That's yeah, usually yeah. when we refresh our inventory. And I think what's great is we've been with this facility, we're able to supply more. Mm -hmm. So we used to like during like the, the pandemic, we used to get like angry people coming. They'd be like, I can't get this. It's out of stock. And, you know, we still get that a little bit, but not as much. And it mm -hmm. definitely makes the evenings a lot easier for, yeah, yeah. for Nicole and myself. Yes. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Very cool. Very um, nice. Where are we going now? Um, well, we could actually head back. We'll head into, we could go through Final QC. Okay. Um, we could, our, and then go into shipping. So we could see where Josh boxes all this up. This okay. is our office front of the building. Not as fun. I try to spend as little time in this part of the building as possible. On the air. Quiet, please. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that's, yeah, the front area where we walk in. We have a little bit of uh, Michael doing some customer service, doing some emails here. Nice. Hello. Yep. Good morning. Good morning, Michael. So Taking care of the people? As best as I can. <laughs> he takes right. care of the people. He does a lot. Like, he does, helps with their newsletters. Um you know, if there's ever a press release you read or anything like that, Michael's doing that. Everything like down to graphics, like it, it's, it, there's a lot that, that Michael's doing here to make sure that, for instance, one thing we've been doing, I don't know if we've talked about this, is other companies that are, that are smaller that we think are doing really cool stuff or we're, you know, we're friends with a lot of companies. We'll For do sure. drops of their products on our website. And we'll direct people to say, hey, this is awesome. Come check this out. And Michael puts together a lot of that. Oh, okay. So make sure he communicates with them. We get all like the product pages live for, you know, whether it's a Lauren Audio Mustang drop or we just did some Vanguard Audio Labs mm -hmm. mics on the website. So this is who's making sure you see that. Nice. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, we appreciate Pleasure it. To meet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a pleasure to meet you. Absolutely. Yeah. You and this, yeah, this room's not, you know, we're not, it's not too much fun. This is the shipping room okay. right here. I want to show you guys this. All right. I'll go on in there. Yeah. This is Josh. How you doing, Josh? Oh, what's up, man? Josh, how long have you been doing, uh, working here with us? Yeah, it's almost up to three years now. Oh, it? yeah. <laughs> he worked at the old shop as well. Yeah, at the house, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, at Pottery Lane. Holding it down. Man. Yeah, it was holding it down. Yeah. And then, uh, we, yeah, he got his own room here. Oh, yeah. You know. Nice. Very cool. Yep. 
Yeah, you know, keep track of it all. Make sure it all gets done. Keep the boys on their toes, and yeah, yeah, we're good. And l- like one one thing that Josh does that I don't think a lot of people think about when they think of shipping is making sure that the unit looks great before it goes to you. So sometimes if he is the eagle eye at the end of the road here that says this sucks, you know, yeah. like and yeah. like and that's great because we need someone to do that. That you know that's super important because that's the last person that sees this before it goes mm-hmm. to its new home yep and we want it to right. stay in that new home and be happy well everything you've ever sent to me was really pretty i appreciate Absolutely. your work yeah, sure. <laughs> so and uh, you're, you're, i'm gonna with those uh, mid-band eqs that i get i, I want them to be pretty yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we can we can uh film in i guess the office part here if we want a little bit but okay. um so these are some of the earlier knobs we got, and we just put them in the bathroom for the ASA. They were too big. Check it out. <laughs> so, that's even a, our bathroom has it. <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. I love it. So this is the front area. You know, you're standing in front of the sign. This is where we where we would you know come in on the office side of things, mm-hmm. and it actually has our wall of employee of the months. We just started it. Oh, okay. What is it? Uh, we're on. Zach's isn't up here yet. He's okay. still out there. So well, that picture. Well, when you take it down off the off the uh, parking spot is when you'll hang yeah. it back up here. And right? they all have inspirational quotes on them, you know? So, yeah. like, you know, sometimes rest is just as important as training, maybe even more important. <laughs> um, I love the steak. It was my favorite. Um, <laughs> believe never, your, what does that say? Never do the same, uh, the two crimes at the same time. <laughs> believe in yourself even if no one else does. And then my my personal favorite is Joey's here. It says, you really can achieve without having any idea what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun. Yeah. And look at that sun shining out there. Oh, yeah. Maybe we will make it to the beach later. Oh, yeah. Very we'll cool. See. We'll see. So we can, uh, you know, let's check out the tube room. I would you love know? that. Yeah. 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 So we got some RCAs in. I Are guess these, you got uh, some of these vintage. Yeah, uh, all, all of them. All of them. Yeah, yeah new, the new old stock. Yeah, so these are some, uh, looks like some vintage 12 bh 7s Let's check them out, Kyle, see what it's like. Yeah. Let's see here. Oh, nice. So sometimes it depends. Sometimes we'll get them with, like, where the font looks perfect. It yeah. Been tut. So, yeah, it looks like the, it looks like you can tell from the stamp, though, that that's an RCA, just from the way, you know, it's got, uh, see, Joe, if you look at the, the font on it, um, so, Joe? Where did Joe go? Guys, I researched it. I'm like 10, 15 minutes from the beach. There's no way I'm going to fly in and out of Daytona Beach, Florida without going to the beach. So he said, good luck. We could have it if we can find the keys. (laughs) Rookie. Rookie. All right. I'll see you in about three hours, guys. Forgot how to drive this thing. What? This is, uh, you know, where we store some of the tubes that come in. This is the well, tube room you, I was talking about, yes, right? Yes, and this is a little display, just a, just a, uh, really a tiny morsel of, oh, of the tubes we've used over the years. These are some of the, the boxes, and Ryan put together a little display. Just, I think it sort of, sort of speaks for itself as far as what we're using and what we're putting in the Audioscape gear. And I think this is something really cool and unique that we do that's different, is using these, you know, I love old RCA, GE, Sylvania, all these old tubes, even some of the old British tubes like the Mullards, the Telefunkins. We, you know, we get a catch of these in every day, you know, basically. That's awesome. Yeah. So are you by yourself scouring the internet trying to find this stuff or do you have other people helping you? So over the like the last decade, I've been, you know, buying tubes for about that long, I feel like. And I've just developed relationships with a lot of the guys, the tube vendors people that go to swap meets, whatever it is. And a lot of them are in the places you would expect. New Jersey, Portland, Austin, like they're like they're in these sort of hubs where this there's still this availability of these old tubes. And I, you know, with certain things, there's certain types I have, but we don't really like I said, you can't really subscribe to any particular thing. Mm-hmm. You you know, you might get you know, 10 
RCA 12AX7As in, but only two of them are going to work in that first position yeah. in the opto. Yeah. So I it's understand. yeah. So this is this is yeah, the, and then the rest is stored in, in boxes. Inventory. Yeah, in boxes, and we you know control the room for humidity, of course. Very cool. Being in Florida. Well, you know what? I got to get a picture of this. This is incredible. Love it. I think most anybody that does what we do, this is this is exciting stuff right here. For the gram, you know. I like the old stock troll thing, the order card. Oh yeah. The old RCA. What do we have here? Oh, it looks like uh, a couple rectifier tubes. So the, will those be used in a, in a product or those? Um, no, I think these are actually some oddball types that don't work in any of our products we have currently. Oh, okay. Yep. Sometimes Understood. if I know a product's coming too. I'll just store and stock up for a while. So mm -hmm. there's some some tubes for I've been storing for a while for products that I know we're going to be releasing. That's amazing. Yeah, sometimes Gosh. the boxes are even just they're falling apart. Oh yeah, the tubes are mean... brand new. Sometimes they're just like I was saying. Yeah, there's yeah some of these old U.S. Navy ones, and you you're the first person to pull them out of the box. You know, you know, except in August 1945. Wow. And yeah, that's. Yeah, that's just bonkers that, you know, this it's still available. There's no substitute for the, a lot of those tubes, right, too. Right. It's just like, it is, you, you know. You either have to change the circuit to, to around a new tube. Oh, yeah. But if you're trying to recreate the original like like you do, I mean, that that's that's what it. If you're what gonna, you have to do. If you're going to do it, do it. Got yeah, it. and don't, yeah, don't use these limitations as a roadblock, you know. Just, you know, if, if you build it, they will come. Yeah. <laughs> and they have. Yeah. They have. Your yeah. website is popping. So yeah, Josh comes out through here. This this little corridor. This is a little bit of uh, you know some of the final boxing things he does uh -huh. for box, you know prepping the boxes. And then we're you know we're kind of back out to where we started for. Okay. Well, very cool. Yeah. So very that's cool. oh, and then oh yeah, I should show you the multimedia room upstairs. L let's do that. Let's go yeah. upstairs. So this I see stairs, and you can see up there. This used to be. A lumber facility. So uh, I think in the 70s, Scotty's Lumber Yard or whatever. Uh -huh. So this is the building that housed a lot of lumber. So this building has a rich history. And there's also some funny, like, old stuff we find from time to time that, like, makes us laugh. There's, you know, random... Uh, there, there, there's like a random beer can up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> random beer yeah. can. There's That may be as old as some of those tubes. Yeah. <laughs> there's... One of the funniest things uh, people notice, and you can't see it from here, but when we get down, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. There is like an arrow that is like stuck in the ceiling. Oh, that's... <laughs> it's so random. I love it. So this is uh, the start... Back during a war. <laughs> this is our multimedia room. It's sort of in a... Uh, you know, we're still... Like I said, we've been in here about a year. We're still getting things set up. But this is, yeah, uh, an area where we take some light box photos. Mm -hmm. Shane here, who you also saw earlier assembling, Hi. also... If you're on, you know, Instagram or emails or you call our, our company phone, you'll get Shane a lot of times nice. as well. So. How you doing, Shane? Joe so, Carroll. Pleasure. How was the trip? Uh, good. Good. Yeah. You anything good yet? Uh, you know what? Not yet. But I think we're going to uh, rectify that around lunch and dinner. Oh, yeah. We <laughs> yeah, we're going to have a good time. I think. <laughs> so these, this That's is actually, fixable. This oh, is always. actually our AES rack. And what's funny is the first time we exhibited an AES, that's when the flood happened. So normally our racks are staying dark, but it was so like the the area was so flooded we couldn't even like so the stain just ended up being this color. But this is what we some of the racks we used for for AES. So did this stuff go through the flood? Nope. Okay, so this is new pieces. Okay, yeah, well, that's right. Your train wreck. We should yeah. talk about that. Yeah. So um, let is, me see. Isn't that what you call it, train wreck? We do. Here, let me move this chair so you can see. We actually send these pieces out to an artist in Arizona. And it's funny that we have a ladder than liftoff silver bullet here because uh, Dr. Bill of ladder than liftoff fame, he's got his own like custom silver bullet. This is actually uh, one of his friends, uh, Larry Trainer in, in Phoenix in Arizona. Mm -hmm. And he was the one who actually suggested we started doing this. And I think it's really neat because it's much like the gear we build where it's its own piece. Mm -hmm. Each one is individual. No one looks alike. There's this whole patina process he does with the knobs, you can tell it's a whole different feel. So yeah, oh my gosh, yeah. A lot of times, you know, uh, there's been a debate, I guess, sometimes of if this is a viable thing to do with pro audio gear and, and recording pieces. 
And I think it is much like it is with guitar pieces in the sense that like a lot of those guys, they like that sanded back of the neck. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's a part of their experience of playing. And this is the same thing. It's a part of the experience using these, these controls that are, you know, have this patina on them and they have a different They're texture and feel. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of, I, I know. How often do you put out a, a batch of these? Not that often. About once a month. We'll, we'll usually do a train wreck Tuesday or something like that. And the market is there. People want them. Yeah. Well, there they, you go. A lot of times studios, as you know, when you're doing studio tours and that, they're themed. Mm -hmm. They have a certain theme they're going for for the studio. And a lot of times this fits in with that theme. Got it. And uh, aside from what I was just saying about the feel and the experience being different, and people want their own individual piece too. And I think that's what's cool about analog as opposed to even like going all in the box. It's like... You get a piece of gear from us or any other manufacturer, that's your piece of gear. There's nothing that's exactly mm -hmm. like that. So that's part of, you know, that's your tool that you're mm -hmm. using every single day. That's a fact. That is a fact. Oh, the, look at the knobs on the blue stripe. Look at <laughs> all jam. I love it. It looks like they, you know, survived. Yeah, that, all kinds of uh, evil, <laughs> yeah. and are still here to prove it. And you, the, know? you know, we we started actually recently. What's funny is this is a newer product, the Going Fifty Eight, but we started doing those in the Train Rack series as well. Yeah, and we only made three hundred of those of the standard Going Fifty Eights, and that, that's a plug-in as well. Uh, right, right. So you have two plugins. You have the reverb, the yeah. spring reverb, and now you have. These are the the hardware units of these are, are gone, correct? You sold out. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so, what I think is really cool about the the plugins we've done so far is they I feel like they offer something different and unique in that digital domain. Mm -hmm. Instead of just being more of the same of what's out there, they're they're offering some value, just like the the hardware does for people that get it. The the plugins of the Golden Fifty Eight. And the XL three hundred five R are offering a lot of value. I remember uh, Ryan, who you have at, uh, at a lot of Here, your trade shows. Your uh, that's one of your designers. Yeah. He every, <laughs> the, the couple of years that you had these in stock after you know your initial build, I went to Nam, and you know he made sure he was really proud of it. He, he showed it to me and let me know how many was left. He's like, hey, you know, they're going to run out, and I never pulled the trigger. And well, now they're gone. Yeah. So he was right. Yeah. He wasn't lying. No. <laughs> and, yeah, we can just film. It looks like Trevor's doing some editing here on a video. He, oh, we have a DI What's video. What's up, Trevor? So we're going to start seeing I some more. Here. I am here Well, in the house. He came to bother you while you work. Oh, my gosh. Look, who knows me? Look at this. This is incredible. Hey, stand up, baby. What? What? Come on. Oh, what? Uh, what? Bring what? it what? in. <laughs> bring it in. You got you to have nah, the goods. Yeah, I got to have the goods. You got to have the Love it. This one. Oh, the intense dark raspberry. Come on, man. Gosh, let's just, just I'm going to go ahead and start. Make, make sure you wipe your hands before you touch anything. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. That's a good one. Just go touch the camera. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very cool. So he edits uh, videos, uh, yeah. promotional videos and things. From, yeah, so. you're doing now. Okay, yeah, it looks like Matt, nice. Matt was doing a, they're doing a promotional video for the DI Plus, and he's been working on that. So we're going to see some more videos that the crew is doing of the gear they're making oh, as well. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It's, yeah, because I'm sure they're proud of it. I, I could tell he was. Yeah, oh, he's, he's oh, extremely yeah. proud oh, yeah. of it. Oh, yeah, and I mean, he makes those. I mean, he guys. designed his own DI. I mean, you know, yeah. that's a guy that he's got some passion. Oh, yeah, you can get kind of get a bird's eye view up here of the scale of the warehouse, yeah. which I think is is really cool. It kind of puts puts things in perspective. I still say you should let me build a big, huge tracking room in here. We have the space. We're talking about putting a room in here. Maybe we could have like a little showroom, Joe. Why don't you help <laughs> us put you together go. a showroom? Keep some drums and some guitars yeah. just set up. Call it the jam room. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, this is something that I hadn't even considered. But every time I order a piece of gear from you or practically anyone else, it you know, it, it, it's very important that it be uh, nestled safely in its box. And uh, you guys would go through absolute truckloads of this stuff we do and we get it from a company in maryland they they bring it down on the big freight trucks and on the pallets as you can see and you know it's funny i mentioned we started in a single car townhouse garage all that mm. well I, it was like a gated community where we we're at and the first time i got a shipment of this in to there it was a nightmare like because like all the stuff was like falling all over the front yard, yeah, and it yeah. was just like it was like pure comedy for anyone watching. But the neighbors not, not probably to be loved a, it, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so 
I was like, okay, we probably need to get another spot. And at the time we were still growing. So we, we got the art studio uh, at Pottery Lane where we were at. And that's where, you know, the second shop was. That was 2,000 square feet. And it was cool because we were building in an old art studio, pottery studio, very mm-hmm. cool vibe, almost like kind of Muscle Shoals kind of vibe going on yeah. there, which, you know, and it was cool because I got to work on the same place, but, you know, that we, uh, that I lived at as well in a separate building. So that was nice. But this, this is what the company needs as far as for growth. We can store all these foam pieces here so we don't have to like wait to delay shipping. Everything can just be stored here. Yeah. Very cool. And I guess it would be primarily based upon uh, 2U, 1U, 3U is, is yeah. kind of how they... This one actually can can be uh, 1U or 2U, the way we designed this particular foam piece. And then the 3U has its own size, I think. Uh, and then this is actually a custom size for the ASA 6A. We had oh, to just I see that custom. angle. Yeah, yep, yeah. You can see the angle right I there. Do, in yeah. Very this cool. is so important. When, when oh, we first gosh. started shipping things, front panels get bent so easy in transit. I mean, you... You know, sometimes it's a wing and a prayer shipping stuff out there, yeah, you know, yeah. these days. I'm sure yeah. we've seen ring camera videos of some of the boxes and people are scared. <laughs> it's like, should I open? just open it up? You know, we've, we've, we've designed it for to be thrown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man, you know, scary. It's still scary. Well, what if we so have we pretty much seen uh, everything we need to see? I think this is a good overview of okay. most of the air, most of the rooms here in the facility. Cause I mean, what I'd like to do, I'd like to sit down somewhere and just chat with you about, um, how you started the company, where okay. you came from, your, your background, you know, like what, what made you become Mr. Audioscape? Uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, let's do it. You yeah, want to? Let's do it. All yeah. right. That sounds like fun. So Chris, you've showed us around and it's, uh, to me, I remember following you on Instagram early when you had just a couple products, mm-hmm. not really knowing much about the company. And, and getting to know you a couple of years ago virtually through some, and through some trade shows and how many employees you had at the time, how many square feet you had at the time. And we just saw what we just saw. So to get to this point, who is Chris Yetter? How did you become Audioscape? What, what led you down this road? Well, you know, uh, what I think is awesome, like what we just saw is it's not so much, it may have started, you know, with the small, you know, Nicole, myself, Joey in a single car townhouse garage, but it's really audio escape is everyone that's here. So it's, it's been just every day doing the same thing. I feel like just like you do with mixing mm-hmm. and just, and, and production and just, just doing the same thing and just slowly incrementally growing a little bit. Every day, getting a little bit better at everything you do. You, you know, I, I feel like that's what this audio scape is uh, in a sense that we just, every day we're trying to get a little bit better. We're pushing ourselves. We're holding ourselves to our own standards of what we expect out of everything. So as to answer your question though, I mean, it's just, I think at the end of the day, I, I probably, you know, I probably have a problem. I'm probably a workaholic. <laughs> yeah. Like a lot of people that are successful, guilty, guilty. like yourself and, we sort of find each other, right? You know, workaholics, mm-hmm. like give a workaholic a passion <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and this yeah. is what happens, yeah, right? You right, know, right. and it, it, it just... How far can I take it? Yeah, it's <laughs> right. like, it consumes you. And like, I, I was talking with someone about, you know, they thought running a business would be easier on themselves. And like, as far as like their workload, I'm my own boss, I could set my own hours. And if you have a passion and you're following that, it's just, it consumes you day and night. Yeah. And that's what, you know, like production mixing does for you. It's, you know? Yeah, seven day weeks. Yeah. So you were mentioning earlier, I remember while we were looking at DI boxes, that you're a guitar player. So I'm assuming that had something to do with oh, rolling yeah. you down this road. Yeah. So it, it started very much an end user side of things. Uh, I'm not an engineer by trade. I dropped out of college to be in a band. And started much like people that, you know, use these tools start, I guess, and like playing music and Mm -hmm. in some form. So I was doing the band thing for a while. Uh, You know, I started having a family while I was doing that band thing. I really could not afford gear. (laughs) I really. So, you know, in the early 2000s, a lot of this, there was this kind of this spark of do it yourself going on, you know, coinciding with the Internet. 
Mm -hmm. And I just immersed myself in it day and night. If I was on a break on a gig, if I was doing whatever, I was just researching. I was just filling my head with as much information as possible. And then I was just putting it to use. And I was, it was just, it was just what you saw here earlier. It's down and dirty. I was just getting my hands dirty. I was shocking the hell out of myself. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> yeah. you know, whatever it took yeah, yeah. to build it. It's like, oh, I, I wired that wrong. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, goodbye, yeah. power transformer. You know, yeah, but yeah. that's, that's how you learn. You won't do that again, or, or you'll do it again in 10 years and remember and laugh, you know, that you did that. But that's really what it's been. It's just following that passion and starting, you know, starting doing from the end user side of things, playing in a band. So I started playing guitar. I started building guitar pedals. Mm -hmm. um, starving artist, very much a starving artist mentality. Um, I didn't even have money for parts back then. I dismantled the VCR and built my first guitar pedal out of that, <laughs> out of like my mom's old VCR. I was still, yeah. I think, you know, at that time we were, had to move back in with my mom, like in the, in the like 2007, 2008 range. And, um, so I was just honing my craft there in that garage, just teaching myself anything I could. I was just, and it was a really exciting time because I could also just, there was a lot of rare circuits out there that are available on the internet. And there was maybe one or two of these things built in eternity and you could mm -hmm. go build that. And that mm -hmm. just really excited me. So I would build these things that no one else could have. And it was like, just following that passion. And that sort of spilled over into guitar amps. I started building guitar amps because I just needed these tools for gigs, for studio, whatever, mm -hmm. you know? And I, you know, started modifying old organ amps, old like Hammond, like, like not the B3 models, mm -hmm. you know, like, mm -hmm. but the old amps. And I would just convert them into old Fender amps, Marshalls, all sorts of old vintage circuits. And sort of really learned a lot about tube circuitry in that process and learned a lot about how important a tube rectifier is, like we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Doing that, and um, I think at one point the Fender like remade this like Fender Champion thing, and it was just like this little circuit board. And I remember going in there ripping the circuit boards out and just wiring like F51 champs point to point side there and selling those. Um, I did that for a while, and it just sort of kind of got a little bit more and more and I was able to use that money to maybe buy like some, you know, some parts for like a chassis for um, our bus comp. I had a producer friend who was really like in the box was super vogue at this time. This is like, I think the big first wave of that where everyone was starting to move in the box. And mm -hmm. it's like the only piece of gear I'd use for hardware for outboard is, you know, like a, like an SSL style bus comp. I was like, Hey, I'll build you one. I'd already built like some point to point, you know, two A stuff for myself and a couple other, uh, studio pieces that I, I thought were important. And yeah, I built that and I was like, this could actually be a product. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. Um, I started, the wheels started turning and I always really, really loved studio gear and I loved handmade studio gear. All like the best studios I went to coming up had handmade boutique gear. It wasn't like all like the big name brands so much. It mm -hmm. was like they had like, you know, Shadow Hills was starting to come into mm -hmm. the fold and all these other companies that were sort of pushing the boundaries of this, this sort of sector. All the records that came out of there, those were inspiring to me. And the gear they were using that was boutique and handmade was the most inspiring thing. And I knew the second I stepped foot in one of those studios and I got that result that this is the gear I wanted to build. So, gotcha. Yeah. That's awesome. So your partner, Nicole, in order for you to, to move this forward to what we know it is today, she had to be integral to yeah, I, supporting this yeah. idea early on. I call her the better half of Audioscape. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't met her yet, but yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you'll, you'll get to chat right. with her and she'll, yeah, I'm sure she'll uh, tell you stories that are, not too flattering of me, you know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, there is so much to running a business that many people don't think about when they go buy a piece of their favorite equipment. And, you know, people have to get paid. People oh, yeah. have to, you know, maybe some of it's not the sexiest tasks, but it's so important that it's on point or the whole thing falls apart. The wheels fall off the bus. When she was the start of our whole logistics department, shipping, keeping that data on every single piece of gear so we're able to match things for dual mono, that's all Nicole. And, and there's so many integral people that I'm just so grateful that there's, you know, everyone has sort of dug in and believed in this 
and, and Audioscape. And that's why I think it's important that, you know, it was important to me that we created something that was not just named after the person. I think that's something, it's like kind of an idea that maybe it's a, you know, sort of thing where it's it, just saying this is something for everybody. And that's, you know, I feel like we ha- kind of have that sense with everyone that's working here. And instead of, you know, maybe naming a piece of gear after a big name in the in the industry, let's name it after the guy who's building something, you mm-hmm. know, like, let's, who's actually putting the work into it, you know, like, it's just sort of... Uh, What's some examples? A, you know, the, the classic MJR Gold Edition oh, is right. a perfect yeah, example yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wanted to do his own take on it. And so we packed that full of mojo parts and, you know, mm-hmm. did a limited run of that. But it's... It's, you know, having that freedom, having, you know, that sort of back and forth. I don't feel like there's, uh, you know, a traditional like sort of hierarchy, mm-hmm. but, you know, we have, sure, we have things in place for structure, but everybody is, you know, can come up, you know, to me at any given point in the day and, you know, they'll have an idea to improve something and it will get heard. And if it's something that's, you know, it will get done. Okay. Like, it's extremely important that everyone feels and has that sense of ownership with with the brand and that's why like i feel like it, it you know it's i'm sure i'll talk about where we started but we're here because of everyone and sure. i that's so important to me that you know that we represent that and you know we had um a couple of years ago we had uh ryan start who's our managing director here. He does all the mechanical case designs. So like, if you notice like when Audioscape started 2016, 2018 range, our case designs are very simple and that's cool. You know, we're is very brute force, get the job done. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's so nice to have someone that can do these 3D models of things before we even get the metal fabricated, you know? So, and, and really, Iron in if we're trying to recreate something like the old BA6A compressor, we can get everything spot on. Mm-hmm. It's so, you know, it's so cool. I feel like that we've grown in that area and we're offering something different just from the case that comes to you in the product. So I could nerd out on this stuff. <laughs> I get it. So going back to 2016, 17, that's when the company began? 2016, officially, we're starting to develop the, uh, the first bus comp in, uh, 2015. I think the first few bus comps I sold were in generic cases. I think I the first one I ever sold was inkjet water slide decals because we couldn't afford silk on the panel. <laughs> I took the money from that and I bought, you know, 10 cases. And I took the money from those 10 cases. We never took an investment. We've never been in debt. We've never like, you know, it's just it's like I said, doing the same thing every day over and over. And we just grew it that way. So we've never been, you know, we don't have investors and all this stuff that sometimes some companies do. And that's cool if that's the route they want to take. But it's just been hard work from the beginning and just doing the same hard work every day, day in, day out. Okay. So in 2016, how did the name Audioscape come? I don't know the story. Where did the name come from? So it's funny because I was mentioning guitar pedals. And I was still doing CBC pedals, which is the first guitar pedal company I did from 2010 to 2015. At the time, I had a couple original designs, and one of the pedals was named Audioscape. Uh. And I was coming up with the bus comp design. I was like, what can I call this company? Yeah. And like CBC pedals was a joke. I didn't even care about the name. So I didn't even think about that. I was just like, I think it was called like clones by Chris or something like that back then. I was like, <laughs> CBC clones by Chris. It, it, was, it was just yeah, a joke. Yeah. It was, just, it was just a jo- kind of like the name was not, you know, cause I knew it wasn't like the business that I wanted to have long term. It was so a actually, placeholder. <laughs> yeah. I cared about like the name for this. So I was like, I just totally hijacked that name, ripped it right from that pedal design and just, it never looked, and it was even the same font. Like I designed the first logo for Audioscape with the stripes and all that, the traditional logo. It was the same font and everything. I just ripped it right off, chucked it on. I haven't looked back since. I haven't thought about it since either. Yeah. yeah. I just thought it was a cool idea. Kind of like, sort of, like it was just sort of like a bigger idea. So one thing that, there's a couple things that strike me uh, from having seen a couple other uh, facilities, uh, you know, that make pro audio gear and versus being here. And, and uh, one thing is the people, the amount of people that you have in the, you know, in a room working 
on a product with their own hands and soldering irons and crimper tools and all this, all this stuff. Uh, it's, it's very different. It's a very different route than a lot of other people in the industry have taken. So was that, was that a, from the beginning a choice for, uh, QC reasons? I mean, like, wh- why, why are we, I mean, I love it. I love it. But, uh, what made you decide you wanted to, hey, I'm going to keep it right here at home in my backyard. I'm going to assemble it all by hand. And if I can, I'm going to hire somebody else that can and teach them. Uh, why that business model? You know, I'm glad you asked that question. I came in thinking everybody built stuff this way. It was complete ignorance. Like uh, the first time I, we went and exhibited at NAM in 2019, I was like, oh, I'm doing this the hard way. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, 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 this isn't how everything's built. You know, cause I, you know, builder myself. So everything was still for a long time, those first few years, everything I was had my hands in everything. And a lot of times I still do. I try to have my hands in as many gear that as much gear that goes out as possible. So it's just loving actually working on this. There's something peaceful to me about like getting the right combination of tubes and just having, you know, something you're proud of. And it's just so many times you do things and we don't have like maybe a record to show for that work and like, and this is something physical, real. And, and I just love that connection with it and keeping it here. Just, it's just a no brainer to me. It makes sense. You know? So as long as we can do it, we are going to, and I don't ever see us, you know, you know, as long as I'm upright here, moving production anywhere, you know? So it's awesome though. You know, I love it. I love, yeah. I mean, you walk through the shop every day and see every piece of gear that's being made. Yeah. If it comes out the door, it, I mean, it's, it has a part of, of you and Nicole and Ryan and everyone else. It's, uh, I, I love it. I, I, so it's, okay, that's another thing. That was point number two that I was going to make. You come to this large facility, you see that huge warehouse. You think, I mean, you, you, you guys have achieved a certain level of notoriety and respect in the industry, of course. And so you think, large when you're on the outside but when you come in and you see how many products are being worked on at one time how many are on the shelf for some final qc shipping and leaving that day it's you use the word small batch yeah so it it i think that a lot of people would on the outside would think very different about what you do if they, you know, after they watch this tour, I think it's going to be like, oh my gosh, it's, it's kind of still like a guy's custom making this for me on, on his, <laughs> on his bench. It is. It's, it's not a mass produced. No, thing. it's boutique. It's still going to be, even if we get double the amount of people working on this stuff, it's going to be the same mentality, the same production process, the same final QC process that we had when it was just, you know, myself in a single car garage, you know, it's like going to be that. Because it's just rinse and repeat, you know, and it does require, you know, a lot of people working on it at the same time to do that. You know, we're getting to a point where we're approaching 40 people here in this building. And I never thought, <laughs> you know, yeah. where we started, it would have that many people. But if you work hard and you, you know, keep following that and people are, you know, I, I mentioned everyone here. Obviously, we wouldn't have everyone here without everyone that supported us. Think, think about how like rare it is like you can't find us at a big store right how did you how did you hear of us right it might have been social media it was social media yeah Yeah. you know it's either social media or you went in someone's studio you saw our piece of gear it's all word of mouth it's all people talking about it and you know and one thing i will say that's cool about our industry and what we're doing is even some of the the bigger box stores they still support us in a sense as far as like you know, sometimes I'll hear stories that are like, hey, you know, may, we might not have this, but check out this company that does this. And you don't get that. You don't yeah. get that in every business. You know, like a lot of times it's cutthroat, sort of just like like the worst aspects of what you think of business. Mm-hmm. And I think it's it's a really cool area and it's a really cool time to be doing this. And there's still a lot of cool things we can get, we can make, and it's it's extremely exciting. We're 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 like kids in a candy store here every day. I freaking love walking through there and seeing how many opto opto compressors and uh, passive EQPs are still being made because you know th- those have been on the market a while now, and you're not the only company that offers those products. Yeah, but still the demand for those things that go back to fifties and the sixties. 
there's still a, a, a generation of people out there coming up that are buying their first pieces of gear, but they still want hardware. Mm -hmm. uh, or veterans that, as they can afford it, add it to the rack. Uh, I even know, I mean, I mean, I'm a great example of a guy that has some high-end original expensive gear. I have a, a real LA-2A, but I don't want to carry that in a road case around town. Oh, yeah. But I'll carry yours because yeah. I've used it, and it does the same. I mean, it, it's fantastic. And that, which leads me to another point. So the way that you do this, it seems like, when I think boutique, I think expensive. I think, okay, that, if I'm going to pay that guy to make this piece of gear for me, and he's going to source, like, the genuine tubes from <laughs> what, whenever, you know, everything about it is period correct, very, yeah. all this kind of stuff. I think, wow, that's, that's Corvette money. <laughs> I, think, I think it's going to start eating, and, you know, it's going to be very expensive. But then, in reality, when you go to your website, you see that, it's it's by no means inexpensive, but it's not crazy unreachable money either. So I'm I'm assuming the distribution channel that you just mentioned, you know, not being in box stores has to that has to be able to be a reason as far as like um, bang for the buck. Yeah, totally. It, it makes it uh, well. First of all, uh, I think at a certain point, you know. We did make a conscious decision to just dig in and sell direct to people. And one thing that I really enjoyed about it, especially when I was a, only the person, only person answering a lot of emails, is just the connection you have with people asking questions and you can cater to whatever specific needs they have. You know, I want a green knob here or whatever. And, you know, we don't necessarily do too much custom stuff, but I really enjoy like, and then also there's also immediate feedback. If, you know, small batches, if you're building in small batches, if somebody wants something tweaked or they see a way you can improve something, you can do that. You don't have yeah, 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 you don't, you don't have, 750 of them yeah. in the warehouse. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So yeah. it's always yeah. constant improvement. And I think that's one thing I, I, I love about what we're doing is I feel like every day we're getting better at what we do. Sometimes you hear about a, a company, oh, they built them like this back then, but they don't build them like that anymore. Like, no, <laughs> like we're, we're like... Every day, there's we're finding cool new ways to do you know something without you know whatever. So it's just it's it's exciting. I, I hadn't even considered that. Yeah, in the small batches, like a little change in the way you manufacture them that makes things better for me as an end user or better for you as a manufacturer. Whatever it takes, you can do that. That's okay. That's interesting. But I, I think the point I'm trying to drive home is it's kind of it's kind of coming for me. It's it's kind of clarifying coming here and knowing okay i paid i think it was in, in the u.s it was 11 or 1200 dollars for your opto yeah 1100 uh, something like the, that yeah 10.99 is the typical price and there are less expensive ones on the market we all know that mm -hmm. but they don't have some of the things that yours have they don't have new old stock tubes they don't have handmade uh t4 cells you know, I mean, Carbon they're, composition they're, resistors. Right. They don't have I mean, the bits that make. There's the bits that make it go, and it's the bits as a whole. It's not like a lot of times you see that we're, we're advertising this transformers in this unit. Well, it's really that whole recipe as a whole. You can you know take a really cool ingredient and put it in the hands of you know maybe not the best chef and, right, throw, right, right. and throw a bunch of stuff together. You still have that great ingredient, but like it's. You got to really think about everything as a whole and what what it's going to equal in the end result in the final sound. And I think you know I, I always go back to the chef thing. You know, as far as crafting that perfect you know meal or unit yeah. or whatever. You know, well, because it feels to me as an end user of your gear. Because uh, I, I have I have a Blue Strat, uh, the Rev A. I have an F. I have a stereo pair of your uh, EQPs. I have an Opto. I'm a fanboy. You know this. I've <laughs> I've talked to you on the phone and ordered gear before. I have other uh, other things too. Um, oh, I have the D cup. That's amazing. But it, I, I think what I'm trying to say is I feel like when I purchase it, when I when I use your Opto, I don't feel I, it feels boutique. It feels higher end than the price tag. You know, shows. Oh yeah. So and that has to be the distribution. Oh, it is. Big, big we basically impact. just take whatever a dealer would charge, and that's like the price off. So, like, it, you know, a good way to look at it, even on our website, is like you see a slashed out price or whatever. That's kind of like what the cheapest, cheapest 
dealer price would be. Not like, you know, like maybe they're running their big, huge special sale. That's like what it would be. And it's, a lot of times that price is four or 500 more, you know? So that's what it takes to get that type of component and hand build quality into a package at that price point is the way you do business on the selling it, how you sell it direct to the client. Mm-hmm. It, 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 like I said, coming here, I think is kind of, because yeah, I usually, <laughs> when I think of the, the, the opto comp, let's just say, I'm not thinking of you or Ryan or Nicole. I'm thinking of the sound, you know, I'm thinking, yeah. of, I'm, but, um, but now coming here and, and knowing what I own and seeing them made and the price that I paid, it, it all kind of comes full picture. Does yeah. that make sense? No, definitely. So this has been this has been uh, a good trip for me. It's it's been fun, and because uh, boutique at at a um, more affordable price is, I yeah. think that's a that's a that's a really great way of of putting it. Yeah, and I think it's just the spirit. I think that comes through in the spirit of the company. And I, I sometimes you know use the phrase like we're not trying to you know go for your wallet, or we want your rack space. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we want you. The we, wallet will take care of itself yeah. if you provide the right gear at the right yeah, price. Yeah, I, I, you know, I joke sometimes here saying like we sell kind of like at volume prices, but we don't produce in volume. <laughs> and I, I make yeah. jokes about it, but you know, like. But that's what it's working. What it, yeah, it it's is working. Cl- You're growing working. year after year, and it's measure growth. If we grow too fast, then that's where you see companies run into run into issues. If you you know, we've been slowly. I feel like uh, not to use a biblical reference, but I will uh, building a castle on rock. You know, instead of sand, and mm-hmm. or by the beach. But you know, yeah. uh, that that's what I feel like we've we've been really setting this up where you know. Sometimes people are like, oh, you look pretty young to be doing this. I'm like, well, first of all, I'm not as young as maybe I look or whatever, but um, we're set up. That means we're going to be set up for a, a long time. You're going to like, you know, hopefully, you know, uh, 20 years from now, if something needs service or something like that, we're going to be here, yeah. you know, and that's what I'm really, you know, myself, vision wise, I'm trying to make sure that this the company's just set up for the long haul. It's not just like, when you buy a piece of gear from us, it's not like, good luck. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. like at some point you're gonna probably want to, you know, change the tubes out or, you know, retube something or do whatever. And having these units be able to be, you know, serviceable long term, having, uh, it's things you might not think about when you buy something, but it's, it's definitely one of those sort of intrinsic values and, and things that I think we offer that, uh, I'm striving to like not be, Part of uh, that sort of upgrade cycle we have with like maybe our iPhones or something mm-hmm, like that, mm-hmm. where it's yeah. like, the, you know, if we change something to a design, we're going to make it so the people that have bought stuff are not left behind yeah. too. Like if we're going to, you know, we did that with the DI pluses we just released. A lot of people bought DI standards while we offered a trading program, you know, for a minuscule amount, <laughs> you know, well, this, so, you know, because of what we do. We're hoping and planning for this stuff to be a part of our lives for a very long time. My original LA two A was from Phil Spector's room in Hollywood. Oh, nice! And that, that goes back to that studio closed in the mid '80s. That piece is much older than that, and it's still being used today. That that you know, I would expect no less. Yeah. Uh, of every piece of gear that I have for you, and when you know, long after me, and it goes into somebody else's hands. So that's you know it's 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 definitely not um, throwaway mentality kind of thing. Uh, you know, it's yeah. <laughs> funny for uh, you see it in a lot of uh, things you buy. You have to like have certifications, and we you know we've got our certifications. And for the e- EU in particular, you have to put like a sticker on the back that's got like a crossed out trash can. <laughs> oh like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, right, yeah. Well, who would ever want like like that's heresy? Why would you ever think that? You know, yeah, you yeah, would, yeah. get rid of something like that. But you know, that's a thing. Things are being made to be thrown into landfills. And you know, I guess what's funny about the whole evolution of this gear, like you mentioned old Poltec EQs and and you know, old LA two A's vintage ones. And sometimes, you know, when the new things came out, they were throwing them out. Oh, absolutely. And it's crazy stories of radio stations. Just Yeah. Breaks your heart to yeah, hear. Yeah. Yeah. Cause some of the, some of them did not get discovered and found. Some of those actually are in landfills. You know, I know. Right now. Yeah. Maybe, Fairchild. Maybe, yeah. I know. A yeah. lot of Fairchilds. Well, speaking of Fairchild, I think that's a great transition to wrapping up our conversation. So we've talked about where you began. We've seen where you currently are. Tell us about what you have planned for the this next year so or we, two. 
we announced four products at NAM, uh, and we announced the, the Faircomp 670, which we've been working on since 2019. So we've had that in the works for a very long time. We announced that. We're hoping to have that coming near the end of the year, maybe the holiday kind of area. We announced the uh, at an earlier show, we had the uh, MK609 last fall, which we're hoping for around summertime. Dialed bridge, Neve style, British style. Yep. Third, yeah. Yep. And there's a whole fun story with that, you know, how we had an original metal knob and we've just been reverse engineering that for years on end and learning its secret set. It didn't want to give up so easily. Um, <laughs> just fighting you. Yeah. It yeah, was, yeah. it was a little bit of a fight with that yeah. one. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, definitely. But you're, are you going to win? It looks like we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> getting close. We're getting close. <laughs> is yeah. it going to come to a judge's decision or is yeah. it a knockout? Oh, it's it's got every single one's got to be a knockout. Okay, we great. do. It has to be a knockout. Like, um, but and that's the thing. We don't rush things. We really, you know, believe in our products. So we're not going to remake the same product every single year. Like with a different, like you know, Mark IV version of this. Like, will we set? Fourth, to do a product, we really believe in the recipe, everything we're doing, it's fully fleshed out. So sometimes it takes us a while to get something going, you know, um, but that's, you know, we really stand by what we're, you know, how we're doing it and why we're doing it. So I think that's something to keep in mind when we, when we set something to market. Uh, we announced also the map, Dam 27 mm -hmm. preamp. And there's a, we could have a whole different interview about that, but, um, modular audio products is, uh, you know, you mentioned being a fanboy of some of these units you have from us. I'm a fanboy of that company in, in particular. I think it's a really, they just sort of operate in this really cool niche in this space and time. And they had a lot of great products that are just sort of really under the radar. Mm -hmm. Um, they came after the whole Melkor era. Mm -hmm. But they did a lot of the Melkor products. Basically, it's uh, it's based off the old Melkor map uh, AM27 preamp, and it's a dual channel preamp that's coming. It's our first op amp style product. Okay. And it's based on the 1731 op amp. It's got uh, and the way we make it, of course, is all mojoed out with you know carbon composition resistors like they used back mm -hmm. then in the 60s. So it's definitely got a lot of that really cool mid range character that you want from like that seventies era circuit, uh, that, that preamp circuit. So when will something like that hit the market? Ish. Well, we've, you know, we just spoke to Darla out there who's been stuffing the boards on those. So and it's already, yeah, it's already getting close to production time. We're waiting on them, um, the cases to come in. Mm -hmm. And once we get those cases in, it's off to the races. So, nice, nice. and that's going to be a more affordable product too. I think, uh, you know, that's going to be, you know, it, it, no, will that be just the result of, what goes into it? You're, so you're not to make it more affordable. There, there's nothing being left out. It's just hey, this is what goes into it. Yeah, and a lot of times our pricing is like you know I don't want to say it's an afterthought, but it's like it's more about what we feel you know people can afford and for what it is than like trying to bean count every single little part because okay. we're busy here. We don't yeah. have time to sit there and you know we're so it's it's. Very cognizant of, we feel this is the value of this unit that you're going to get your best bang for your buck. So we're really trying to make it so, like you mentioned and you alluded to actually rather, that it's punching way above its price point, what you're getting. You're getting something that's, you know, maybe four times the value with your, with, I feel like when you, ever you buy any piece of gear from us. I, I, I agree. Now, will these, the, the dam or the map, will they be, Single, how, how, what, what kind of chassis so, would that be? So that is actually going to be a, uh, one U mm -hmm. case that's a dual preamp. Okay. So a stereo. Yep. It's right, a stereo very preamp. Cool. Yeah. Very nice. And then, um, the fourth product we announced is actually the digital product at NAM and that's already been released. That's the Golden 58, uh, stereo preamp. And what I think is funny about that is it's like, how do you do a preamp plugin, right? Mm -hmm. And one thing that is really cool about the Golden 58 that we encouraged, uh, people to do is to chain channel one into channel two and to use it as a saturation box. Right, right. And I've used a lot of different preamps that way and nothing quite saturates like that particular unit. That is really one of the most special features. So it, there's just something with the harmonics that happens with that. And so having that be one of the main features of the plugin was important for us as well. You know, use it as a, you know, and also maybe as a gain on your master bus to fatten yeah. up your mix. Yeah. 
Because it, it is really fat. If you look at a graph of that, it is so beefy in the low end, but it's not muddy. And that's one of the right. things I love about it. So, okay, that leads me to two questions, because I know you've got things to do. You're a busy man, so I'm going <laughs> to let you go, I promise. No, I got But I have two I, questions. I got all day. So software world. You have two plugins now, which I don't know if everyone knows about that, but you have your reverb, I, we mentioned earlier, and now your Golden 58. Mm -hmm. Is there a future in the software world for Audioscape? Are there, you don't have to give me any specifics. Oh, I think there is a future in the software world, but I think it's going to be more of the same in the sense that we feel like if something gets released, it has to add a lot of value to, to that medium and to that. So like, uh, having plugins that are special and unique and have a unique aspect to them is, if we do that, any more plugins, it'll be like that. I'll okay. just put it that way. Okay. All right. Last question, then I'm gonna let you go. The, you mentioned the Golden 58. You now, when I think of, well, of course, you have your direct box too, but you have a lot of pro, uh, products that are pretty much one for one, or sometimes maybe you've added a dry wet knob or something like that. But yeah, close to one, one, you know, one for one on historic gear, legacy gear. Mm -hmm. The Golden 58 was a different animal. Yeah, that was not designed on. Hey, let's. I'm going to try to dissect this circuit and rebuild it. It was its own kind of animal based on some lineage from the past, of course, but because it's tube based. Yeah. But do you have, is, will there be any more products like that in the future for you guys where you're kind of doing your own thing? I think there will be. And I think it's just one of those things where like the company was started out of necessity. And a lot of times these products come out of necessity and, you know, that was just me uh, riffing back and forth with one of the guys we buy a lot of tubes from. And we and he was, you know, really like this particular tube, the 5879, Golden 58. And there was like a lot of uh, a really good source of them. We could we could get them like just brand new in the original boxes. I think the, the ones, the 5879s we got, I, I could show you some of the boxes, but they came from like the Department of Transportation in Ogden, Utah, and they're in these boxes and mm. like, but it's very, you know, similar, different pinout, but similar in characteristics to an EF86. Mm -hmm. And, and we did some really cool, interesting things with that design that are really still very original. Uh, we used OEM transformers from the seventies that were in a lot of Euro consoles. And that's really why we limited it to 300 units was those input transformers. And then to boot on each channel, we actually used two input transformers bridged together. Um, so we just did some really cool, interesting things that are not typical. And by doing that, we were able to goose more gain out of the circuit. Still, it's only 56 dB per channel, which is why we started recommending people chaining them one into mm -hmm. the other. Mm -hmm. Little did we know when we do that, that we would get this crazy cool, unique saturation effect. Mm -hmm. Like that's just different than just standard, you know, tube preamp grit or whatever. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, possibly it's just, some new. The golden yeah. whatever could be in the future. Then. Yeah, there's you're not a, you're yeah. Not, you're not opposed. The wheels are always turning. We have ten to fifteen things on average in active development at any given point in time. Very cool. So we're just chasing whatever we're passionate about at that point in time, and then also our supporters. You know, people that buy our equipment. I that's what I call them. They give us requests yeah. a lot of times. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. We're, we're, we are a loud bunch. And, <laughs> we know and, what we want. Yeah. yeah. yeah and they yeah. tell, they, yeah. And sometimes they hammer us over the head, yeah. but we listen. Yeah. We really do. If, if it's something that a lot of people want and they want to see from us, we're going to have it in active development. So if there's something that you want from us that we haven't done yet, odds are it's being worked on. Okay. Wink, wink. You yeah. Know? <laughs> right. 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 Awesome. Man, I appreciate you. So we're going to come in tomorrow, I think, and we're going to be, uh, Putting putting some uh, some files that I brought with me. Yeah, through through some of this mojo. Yeah, we're gonna be uh, eating some chocolate. You're yeah, gonna be, gonna be right rocking here. some AS gear. This is the same exact desk uh, that you have. It I is think, in your new spot. Yeah, it is the session desk uh, trapeze series. Yep, trapeze yep. series, which I is fully it. modular. You could add more of these racks, which is really neat. So it'll be cool. You'll be kind of a little bit at home. You yeah, have some yeah. people working on gear around you. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah, just don't. <laughs> Just yeah. if they if they're messing with your with your mix, just, okay. just just tell them you know you're trying to work. All okay? right. Well, I get it. I get it. Well, I'm looking forward to coming in here tomorrow and getting getting busy. But 
I'll leave you alone for today. Thank you so much for your Joe. time, Chris. Appreciate yeah, thank it. you. All right, guys, that completes my day at Audioscape. I've had a great time. I learned a lot about the products, met a lot of awesome people, do a lot of awesome things. I kind of feel like I'm part of you guys now, the Audioscape family. So as, as, a, as a goodbye, what if we do like a 1980s sitcom jump on three? Ready? Tell everybody bye. One, two, three, bye!